almighty God who, in thy infinite wisdom and providential goodness, has appointed the offices of rulers and councils for the welfare of society and the just government of man. We beseech thee to behold with thy abundant favor us thy servants, whom thou hast been pleased to call to the performance of such important trusts in the Commonwealth of Dominica. Let thy blessing descend upon us here in this parliament assembled, and grant that we may, as in thy presence, treat and consider all matters that shall come under our deliberation in so just and faithful a manner as to promote thy honor and glory, and to advance the good of those whose interests thou hast committed to our charge. All which we ask in the name and for the sake of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning to all the members, our media, security, strangers, just one small announcement. Um, um, certain members have called in to say that they will be arriving late. And um, so I'm asking members to observe our quorum diligently and make sure that we have our quorum going at all times. Um, and house resumes and debate continues. Go ahead. I too, Madam Speaker, rise to give my 100% support to this 2014-2015 national budget. One well, Speaker, before I so do, I want to say thanks to the people of Colhu, Jibla and Biosh, for their sterling support over the years. I sincerely pray that God will continue to bless them and their families. And I will keep supporting them with the in or out of Parliament. Madam Speaker, I also want to congratulate a child from the College Government School. Rebecca George for obtaining a scholarship in this year's national assessment exam. That's because she got all A's. I also want to congratulate all the other students from the Collier Dubler Primary Schools and wish them well at the journey to the secondary school in September. I want to remind them, please apply for your $500, a feat we have never seen before. And of course, Madam Speaker, that will help the parents in meeting their school supplies. Madam Speaker, I had the privilege to be in Parliament to listen to 10 out of 11 budgets that were presented by Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, Minister of Finance. And this budget, Madam Speaker, 2014 2015, in my mind, was very good. It had captivated my entire being and arrested my soul, Madam Speaker. <laughs> this 2014-2015, Madam Speaker, budget is the best of them all. Not that the others were not brilliant, but I view this budget, Madam Speaker, as the people's budget, written and crafted for the people of the Commonwealth of Dominica. 
Right, Speaker? Every man jack can pinpoint an area which applies directly to him and that of his family. And my speaker, once again, the English language has failed to give me an appropriate adjective to describe the content of this budget. <laughs> And speaker, this content, this budget, is second to none. And I sincerely congratulate the Prime Minister on his delivery. My speaker, as he presented the budget, you could see and feel the intimate connection between him and the budget. He was convinced that what he was saying and what he was doing was the right thing for the enhancement of the lives of the people of the Commonwealth of Dominica. But, Madam Speaker, on the other hand, we had the leader of Team Dominica reciting a budget somewhere across the Fashion Center in Roseau, and the leader of the position muttering a budget in this honorable house. Two different budgets. Read by two different people at two different locations. But thank God, only two people listen to them. And these were the presenters of the budget. My speaker, I think that spells confusion, disaster, chaos, disunity, and a recipe for continued failure. My speaker, having said that, I think Parliament should engage a legal draftsman or some other competent person to amend the standing order, Madam Speaker, to include a rule which speaks to how the leader of the opposition reports to a national budget. The rule, Mr. Ag, should state clearly that the rebuttal of the leader of the opposition must make complete sense. <laughs> Madam Speaker, too often, the report makes absolutely no sense. And I think that in fact, short changing the people of Dominica. But Madam Speaker, people are glued to television. People take time, time off of their business schedule to come to listen to Parliament. But we expect to hear something that makes sense. My speaker, people want to hear a clear alternative. One that, one that is practical, one which is no in, innovative, and which the Dominican populace can identi identify with. But my speaker, as expected, from the leader of the opposition, a good friend, he has failed. My speaker, I listened to the rebuttal. I expected to hear from the leader areas which he supported and areas where he thinks that should be beefed up. But my speaker, last year, the leader of the opposition is found wanting. My speaker, this government has always sought to bring relief to the people of Dominica. And so the reduction of the import duties of baby wives and adult dis disposable pampers is more, most welcome to the people of Dominica. My speaker, those of us 
who had the golden opportunity to take care of her grandparents, can attest to the high cost of those diapers. And so the man speaker, granny sometimes uses five or six pampers a day. So that tells us how deep it would dip into our pockets. And of course, Madam Speaker, the love here for your granny, you have to make sure that you supply her with those pampers. And so, Madam Speaker, this measure will bring great relief to many of us, and of course, those on the opposite side. But let's speak we are living in a new age, an age where the use of computers is no longer a luxury, but a necessity, a necessity. An age where information can be given or received almost instantly. An age where buying and selling is no longer done face to face. Where learning is no longer done face and age where meetings are no longer kept on one particular island. And so, Madam Speaker, the purchase and owning of a computer is as significant as the purchase of, say, a bed, a television or even a stove on a speaker. Every house should own a computer. But speaker, no longer do students have the need to queue up at the libraries, attempt to search for materials to do the research. No longer do students have the need to apply to colleges and universities using the services of the post office. And Madam Speaker, some of us use the comfort of our bedrooms to shop online. Some of us use the comfort of our living rooms to receive the bank transactions. And some Madam Speaker, the use of a computer is very vital. Madam Speaker, many of us do travel and we do our travel arrangements without going to the travel agency, Madam Speaker, all because of the use of a computer. Madam Speaker, we know about the social network. We keep in touch with family and friends via Facebook. We, we meet new friends. And so, Madam Speaker, the government, knowing the use of computers, has taken a stance. Well, Madam Speaker, at present, the price of a computer may be a turn off to many. As such, this government is making the purchase of a computer very attractive by removing the import duty of 5% and the custom service charge of 3%. This, Madam Speaker, will enable every home to own a computer. But Madam Speaker, I work at Dominica Social Security and very often I meet the persons who are of pensionable age. And in our discussion, Madam Speaker, they remind you and tell you exactly who they work for. And which years they worked. Madam Speaker, the system has failed them. But as because these persons made vital contribution to 
the development of Dominica. And because the ISA didn't work long enough with the employer, whether private or public sector, or did not contribute long enough for a pension and social security, the system is saying that they cannot receive the pension. Madam Speaker, let's look at the job description of a housewife. Madam Speaker, her day starts at 4 in the morning. Madam Speaker, She prepares the family for work and for school. She has something my, my sister, to, to, to wake the children to go to school. My, my sometimes she has to work the husband too to go to work. My sister, when she gets about four, she does a little devotion, and go straight to the kitchen to prepare coffee for the family. Have we done so, Madam Speaker? And you also, you know, in those days, the kitchen was on the outside. And she likes one fire. A same fire she uses with coffee, a same fire she uses to make the breakfast. Prepares children for school, prepares the husband for work. When it's up by nine, picks up a bang where? A bang where? A big base, madam speaker. Put it on the head, man speaker, and go to the river. To do her laundry, man speaker. My speaker, while she's at, while she is at the river, my speaker, she also listens to hear if a shell blows. If a shell blows, my speaker, she leaves the clothes. Zimi lavi. She's half washed, my speaker. Go to the bay, and buy fish, gets back to the river, continue washing the clothes and clean the fish at the same time. My speaker, by 10, she goes home, open the clothes, and start preparing lunch. Because some of the kids come for lunch at 12. When the kids come to school, from school for lunch, in the middle of lunch, send them back to school, has to clean the kitchen, and by four o'clock, because she has to remember to warm her husband's lunch, because we would need a hot meal from work. But so having done that, by five, five forty, she wash the dishes. And by eight months ago, she goes to bed. And months ago, when I think she goes to bed to rest, she's expected to do or engage in another form of work balance speaker. So months ago, we cannot let this young lady, now 70, just die, months ago. Madam Speaker, we have, and this government, Madam Speaker, has put something in place for this young lady, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the farmers, Madam Speaker, those of us who raised up in the family village, 
when the farmer gets about four bananas per girl, early in the morning, walk that treacherous road, man, speaker, up the hills and down the valleys, with load. So in those days, man, speaker, it's only those who could afford but money could buy a donkey or, 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 or have a vehicle. And so, man, speaker, he has to walk up those roads, man, speaker. Most times, man, speaker, no transport. He has to go to the garden. But the fishermen have to brave those rough seas. And so, man, speaker, this informal sector, the government has seen it fit to provide them with a pension. I must go, while, while I'm there, man, while I'm that, I'm there, I want to appeal to the informal sector, to, to get registered, to make a sure security, so you can earn a pension when you're of pensionable age. And of course, um, husbands too can register their wives and pay on, the, on their behalf. Madam Speaker, this government is a government of compassion. And so, all those 70 years and older, the quality of their lives will be enhanced because of this compassionate government. And so, Madam Speaker, we welcome in the quality constituency this initiative. So I'm sending a call to all those seven years and, and older in Kuala Dublin Biosh with no with no known income. Whose income is less than two hundred dollars a month to register the village council or at the constituency office. Let's look at the increase in market interest allowance from 15,000 to 25,000 per annum. Let's look at this will significantly impact the number of persons who currently pay mortgage interest in excess of 15,000 per annum. Let's look at the amazing change in this year's budget is the increase in the non-taxable income from 20,000 per annum to 25,000 per annum. But let's, go, let's look at an illustration. Let's look at someone earning a basic monthly salary of $4,000 who has a mortgage. Let's look at what happens now and what happens the change. Once you give your salary is four thousand dollars monthly, your annual salary will be forty thousand. What happens now, Madam Speaker, is that the personal allowance is twenty thousand, and the interest mortgage is fifteen thousand, which means when you add twenty thousand to the fifteen thousand. I take, take it away from the annual income. You pay income tax on fourteen thousand. So you'll pay fifteen percent of the thirteen thousand, which means he will pay one thousand nine hundred fifty dollars, or as per annum, or one sixty fifty. Monthly. You have five minutes left. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaker, I ask that the member be given ten more minutes to complete his submission. Second, Madam Speaker.
It has been moved and seconded that the member be given a further 10 minutes to complete his contribution. Those in favor? Those against? The ayes have it. You may continue. Thank you. Supreme Speaker, at present, some of the basic salary of $4,000, we pay income tax of $1,950 a month. But Mr. with the change, if that same salary, because the personal allowance is now 25000 and because the interest mortgage is 35000 that means he has $50,000 on which he pays no income tax. So the person earning $4,000 a month, which is $48,000 monthly, with this change, my speaker, we pay no income tax. That means he has benefited $1,950 in his pocket or one sixty fifty every month, my speaker. And this is what the government is doing. Something meaningful, putting money in the hands of the working class. And of course, the middle class. Madam Speaker, we in the Cole constituency have benefited tremendously in the housing sector. And I'm sure we'll continue to do so on the passage of this budget. My speaker, we are expected to do some very important repairs on some houses on the unfortunate among us. And I'm going to remind the call people, Madam Speaker, that the extension of call you is a plump up here. Lands will be expected to sell at affordable prices in the very near future. So call people, let's hold on the screen. Very soon, we'll start selling land for you where you can build your own home. My speaker, at the NEP prog program, as a national employment program, my speaker, this is a well thought out program. My speaker, this program gets the unemployed employed, no matter what skill you possess. And even if, my speaker, you don't possess a skill, you still get employed. My speaker, we in the Cole constituency have gotten 27 places ranging from internship, apprenticeship, education mentor, and community development. We are expecting, my speaker, to receive some, some placements. In fact, when I speak, our forms are already at the NEP office. And we waited patiently when this budget we passed. Madam Speaker, the Yes We Care program in the Cole constituency continues to provide quality, humane service to our elders. And maybe, Madam Speaker, wait not for this program, some of our elders will have gone to meet their maker. I want to say thanks for this program. Madam Speaker, in, in, in education, I already spoke to the Minister of, of Education, Madam Speaker. That we're working on a few more scholarships. And in, in December of this year, Madam Speaker, the young man from, from Colio in Venezuela was expected to, 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 to graduate. And so, Mr. Minister, I'll better just steps um, very early looking for scholarships for the people of Colio, the Blanc Biosh. Madam Speaker, in, in, in Biosh, we are going to complete the, the back road. Very, very soon, we'll, we'll see commencement of the, the back road. And I want to thank the people from Biosh, Madam Speaker, profusely for, for their patience. We are looking for more, for, for more projects in the constituency. We're hoping that under the BAM project, we'll see the completion of the Opitor and Arrows the Feeder Roads and other Feeder Roads in the constituency. We're also expecting some monies 
I'm promised by Prime Minister for washrooms, and that, of course, we, we will certainly get um, as soon as this budget is over. Mr. Speaker, we're hoping sometime next year we'll finish the house at Jubla and the, and the pavilion. Mr. Speaker, we acknowledge that we live in times where money is scarce and the global economic hardship. And we thank the government for steering this ship to safety. Mr. Speaker, we're not quite out of the woods, but we are better than many of our Caribbean sisters. I thank the government for keeping the ship afloat. My speaker, that being said, I have no reservation in supporting this 2014, 2015 national budget. I thank you. Madam Speaker, I rise as Minister for Social Services, Community Development, and Gender Affairs, and also Parliamentary Representative for the West Sea Constituency to make my contribution to the 2014-2015 budget address. I wish firstly, Madam Speaker, and soon to be Mr. Speaker, to commend the Honorable Prime Minister and the Minister for Finance for delivering the budget address for the 2000. 13, 2014, 2015 year, Madam Speaker, with a focus on the expansion for the economy and for the overall well being of the people of Dominica. I wish to congratulate the Prime Minister and also the, his technical staff of the public service who were also involved in the process and taking this budget to what it is today. Mr. Speaker, I describe the budget as one aimed at economic growth and the measures to alleviate poverty and improve on a whole, Mr. Speaker, the well-being of the people of the Commonwealth of Dominica. I am very pleased to support this year's budget. But, Mr. Speaker, as I perused through the address, I know for sure that the ministry um, of which I am responsible, the Ministry for Social Services, Community Development, and Gender Affairs, there were many areas geared at poverty alleviation, employment creation, the maintenance of social safety nets um, for the vulnerable and indigent people of Dominica. A people, Madam Speaker, or Mr. Speaker, that this Prime Minister and this government take, have at heart. As the ministry committed to delivering um, equitable and quality social services for sustainable development, Mr. Speaker, I applaud this year's effort budget, the effort in this year's budget to encourage entrepreneurship and enterprise development and also job creation and income generation, as a matter of fact, for the people of Dominica. And this opportunity augurs well for self-reliance and the independence critical to sustaining lives and to make a difference in all our communities, in our villages, 
and by extension, the Commonwealth of Dominica. Mr. Speaker, let us take a brief look at on the social welfare. And for the physical year 2013, 2014, 2,392 persons, Mr. Speaker, benefited from a monthly allowance. And that is, Mr. Speaker, to children, to individuals, to families, and to at least bring a level of sustainability to all of them. Mr. Speaker, further support was also provided to families to meet out their needs to their people in areas such as um, medical areas, burial, and education, even though the education um, division is responsible also for helping in, in, in those areas. We also helped victim, fire, victims of fire disasters and natural disasters. And Mr. Speaker, you know that when some of those things happen, sometimes it is to no fault of ours. There is the area the, um, in Massa. There was also in Newton, and I think some other area. And all people were right there to be able to give, including myself and the parliamentary representative, to give support to all people. Because we, we have the, the notion that we look after our people from the, the stomach, Mr. Speaker, right to the grave. Yes, and it's from the room to the tomb. My sister gave me a better um, thing to say. So, Mr. Speaker, when we say we look after the Dominican people who mandated us to do that, we do just that. In addition, Mr. Speaker, I want to commend the staff of social services. Sometimes it is not very easy because we all know the economic crisis all over, and it is not always easy to just find the sum of money right away to give to the people. But with the kind of leader that we have and the government, we are always able to come through for them. The ministry also focused on the vulnerable and the indigent. And Mr. Speaker, I was so very elated, and I know a number of my colleagues, colleagues have already spoken about the disposable diapers that we are now going to see a reduction on tax and thus reducing the amount that people pay for disposable diapers. And Mr. Speaker, some people, I do not know if they think that they do not have families, or it is only when it touches them that they must support other people. But we are always looking out for those who cannot look out for themselves, Mr. Speaker. And um, I do not go into details as my, as, uh, oh, Mr. Speaker, it was you, who just talk all about the housewives. And that is why I always say the housewives should be paid. They should be given a salary. Yeah, really. And I just want to say another thing. I have seen persons who are unable to purchase disposable diapers. Because if you are on the ground, and as a woman, I've seen it, that we call they try to recycle disposable diapers, Mr. Speaker. Because they, 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 they do, some of them have to throw out whatever is in it and try to wash out the thing with the plastic. Imagine that. And Mr. Speaker, we are also speaking about the health of our people. And for persons to sit by and just talk nonsense about a, 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 di a pamper budget. But again, when you do not have anything else to say, you have to talk nonsense. 
and to be able to bring that sort of relief to single mothers, to any mother as a matter of fact, and particularly to the elderly. I really, really want to give all of my support to that particular measure. Mr. Speaker, I do from time to time have to help to chip in to get some disposable diapers, not only for children, but also for the elderly. And particularly, even now, and I want to congratulate Dominica, and I want to congratulate particularly this government, who made it their point of duty for providing or the, 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 through the initiative and the leadership of the Prime Minister, where our centenarians are able to receive $500 a month. Because I, I, I can already say, those of, uh, who are bedridden, 200 of that will go into buying disposable diapers for them. I went shopping for disposable diapers for someone not so long ago. And just trying to pick and choose to be able to spend the money, one of them cost $54. And sometimes persons, and that was mentioned already, but I'll say it, send barriers of just disposable diapers just to help to ease the pain for the persons who have to look after the elderly and also the babies. And I want to say that any right-thinking person, any person with a heart, any person with sympathy to women, any person with sympathy to the elderly would support this measure. And not supporting it, Mr. Speaker, I do not know what it could bring out of it. We have 35 centenarians now. And Dominica must be thinking of why we have in only 70,000 persons, why do we have 35 centenarians? And we have to think about that. We continue to care for them. They continue to get lights and water free. They continue to get LPG free. And Mr. Speaker, when I see now that this measure comes up again to be able to help them, it sincerely makes my heart glad. Mr. Speaker, I wish to also highlight chances. And this is, is a home for children at risk. And mon many of you must have visited that home and seen that the residents there are really in a home and how happy they are. But I also want to appeal to the Dominican people that having those children, and we also buy diapers for the children, we buy milk because it's a home, we have babies, and we have children ranging from as, um, as early as three months all up to 18 years. And so you can well imagine. And I also want to thank those persons out there. Um, I will not be able to call the names of all the NGOs who are able to give support to chances. But one of the things I want to, to appeal to the people of Dominica and to appeal to our parents, let's look after our children. The government will help you. We'll all help, but let us look at, after our children. Not let, let us not expose them to abuse, and let us help them to grow up and to develop well, so that we can have all rounded and good children to take the place of all of us when we, we, we leave. Um, this land. And Madam Speaker, we have about, Mr. Speaker, we have about 105 children who have already gone through the doors of chances. Presently, we have 30 residents and um, Madam uh, Mr. Speaker, we really take pride in being able to use a holistic approach of caring for those residents are chances. 
So Dominicans, let us, let us look. God gave them to us. And they are our treasures, just as the elderly too. And for those persons who abuse the elderly, I call on them to look after our elderly. But it's like something all the, it, it amazes me. And a number of you must have seen this last hundred old lady from La Plaine and uh, how she was able to dance even better than maybe a 60 year old and 70 year old, yes. And um, um, Honorable Sergio could see her boogieing down, you know. And we must be able to look after those persons. And it is because so the government has been looking after them. It's like they were just waiting to shine for those, um, 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 for the labor government. Why, during our time, we have 35 of them alive. And as a matter of fact, next month we'll have two more added, taking it to 37. So you can work out the percentage and see. And it is because so um, the, the family members are able to look forward to what they are able to get, even though all of it cannot help them to look after them. But it can help, it can make a big difference in taking care of the elderly at the end of the month. Madam Speaker, I also want to talk about the, the measures, um, other measures for the, the care, the, the elderly. And uh, Madam Speaker, I want to talk, or Mr. Speaker, I want to talk about the care of the elderly and the program that we call the Yes We Care program. Mr. Speaker, this is a flagship program of the government and initiative by our visionary leader and supported by this labor government. A program very dear to my heart because most of you might have heard that if the, the elderly bless you, they indeed bless you. And don't pray for them to curse you because when they curse you, indeed, you will be cursed. And to many persons who think that supporting the elderly is probably doing some politicking, that is, that is why the, the Labour government will continue to be successful. It, will, it, is, it was successful before, and even the co in coming up election, it will be successful. Because you know what? Those persons who say their rosaries or read their or the press every morning, who lie and say, thank God for the government, thank God for Skerritt, thank God for the parliamentarians. The blessings must fall. And so, under that program, we were able to employ as a government, 54 persons. We have a coordinator, we have administrative assistant, an office assistant, we have driver and an office attendant. We have nine supervisors over the country and 41 caregivers. As a matter of fact, the 41 caregivers doesn't tell the true story because there are other caregivers who are now employed under the NEP program that we are not able, and I will talk about the NEP program in a while. Um, when I talk about, I'll just put everything together when I talk about my constituency. But we have to be indeed grateful for that NEP program. And I appeal to anyone, if you know of an elderly that is not being cared for, let us know. You can let, let us know through the, the ministry, you can let us know through your pal rep, but we are indeed for this Yes We Care program. And that's a flagship program of the government. And I say this with all honesty, because when I go to represent the country at um, overseas, at, at meetings and conferences, I am asked about how we do this program. Because any country, any person who cannot look after its elderly, look after its young and its elderly, I will say again, it is not worth its salt. And indeed, this labor government is worth its salt. And that is why 
we will not we will spare no effort and you heard it also from the prime minister that he doesn't care whether he has to leave some part of infrastructure alone but we will continue with these social programs and especially a program like the yes we care program and we continue to expand on it and we continue to be able to help our people giving them the personal care we have 198 persons under that program, Mr. Speaker. And uh, we just approved of three months, so soon it will be 201 or more plus. And we can do that because we have the, the help of the persons under the NEP program. But that just does not justify, Mr. Speaker, that we abandon our elderly. We do have, even though the government has a responsibility, but we, as, uh, as, as, as children, um, aunts, the neighbors, we as people of our country, we have a, a, a responsibility to also take upon our, ourselves to care for the persons by us. So we do not wait until the persons on, um, um, on the Yes, we we care program, the caregivers come back on a Monday morning to be able to look after the elderly. The weekend is there. Take, take, take care of them. Take them out too. Look after them. And we also will get the blessings for that. I can report, Madam Speaker, that since we have been looking after those persons under the the Yes, we care program. We have seen results. Persons we thought could never walk again are able to walk again because we have a, a gentleman in Bells, and I hope he will not be annoyed about me calling his name. But I want persons to know that, you know. But a Mr. Esprit, who could not walk before, and now he's able to walk with some aid, right? And his um, condition continues. To improve. We have another man from Marigot, uh, Mr. Warrington, uh, Mr. Speaker, and is now showing signs of independence and can now clean the grass around his yard, go for his medication. We have another person from Salisbury, you know, uh, Mr. Martin Vidal of Salisbury, who was bedbound and is now mobile. So we are seeing that not only the, 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 the care, what we are seeing what the care that this government has been able to give to the elderly is now doing for their own independence, their own health, Mr. Speaker, and that we need to be proud of. And let me say, thank the government, let me thank the Prime Minister for being able to help our people in that kind of a way. In our ministry, Mr. Speaker, we also um, help the, the elderly by erecting um, houses for them. Um, we, we, we collaborate with the Ministry of Housing, but it is through our ministry we also do that, and we erect washrooms for them. And any one of them who is unable to have water brought to their homes, we are able to bring water to their home and also electricity. So this government is doing good and this government will continue to succeed. Mr. Speaker, I also want to, to talk about the local government department under my ministry. And um, the local department, all of us, Mr. Speaker, we are quite aware of it because most of the times, all of the ministries, they are able to call upon my ministry to get some sort of help from local government. And we try to empower um, the persons there. That is why we have a number of, of persons wanting. There is a record um, 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 coming from dailies of I saw 19 persons or 17 persons um, wanting to, to um, run for, for the local government 
um, program. And Mr. Speaker, we continue to empower them, especially the chairpersons. We intervene by ensuring that we equip them with the tools and the strategies to manage and implement the many projects that are coming or are going through the local government departments and the, as we call them, or village councils. And never before, never before have village councils or town councils been so empowered than in this era under the Labour Party government. Mr. Speaker, it is under this government that we do, they do receive large sums of money to be able to help um, execute projects in their communities. And they have been doing that very well. There are some of them who can, Mr. Speaker, account for every cent that is given there. And they are also supervised under our ministry. And uh, we are able to help them to manage their affairs in the communities. And we believe, mid, um, Mr. Speaker, um, for the need of good governance, we believe for, and in the need for transparency, and that is why we continue to hold workshops to train our local government. We are also um, ably supported um, with, da with DALCA, um, that's the Association for Local Community Authorities. And Mr. Speaker, I just want to also recognize the need for the communities to be viable, um, to bring about viable economic activities. And uh, one such um, activity, we call it the local economic development, Madam, Mr. Speaker. And this is being done right now in Woodford Hill, my own constituency, and also in Sufrius, Cotshead, and Gallio. Even right now, there is um, some sort of enterprise development they were able to, to muster to the tune of US $90,000. And I must congratulate also um, Jaisai Binwa in being able to spearhead because he is the local economic development personnel here and to be able to spearhead this, those enterprises. And uh, it's been a long road in getting there. Um, I remember the first meeting I attended in Canada and asked that Dominica be put with the other countries that um, were going to benefit under this program and uh, it had to go through, as usual, a number of, of things, but eventually we were able to get this program. And I am very, very happy that Woodford Hill was chosen also for being part of the program. Mr. Speaker, in National Day of Community Service, you know that the local government also plays a large role. And in the budget again this year, there is a sum of money for the National Day of Community Service. And it is one time that all, everybody, all of the communities come together to be able, in one way or another, to give back to Dominica, to their community, to their village, some sort of, of help. And so you see the building of trains or the, the um, um, roads and the cleaning up of Dominica. Let me, as I'm on my feet, appeal to Dominica, and especially to, because we are in the hurricane season, let me appeal to Dominica that we should not wait until the National Day of Community Service to clean up our drains and our backyards and all of that. Because some of, uh, when we do not do that, it is some of this that destroys our road and or um, drains and that kind of a thing when we get to the heavy and I understand maybe some little weather is on its way 
by weekend. So let us get up there, cut the grass, clean the drains, clean up our place. Besides that, we, we are not out of the woods with chicken gun here. And so we have to remember cleaning up our, 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 our places is one way to getting rid of chicken gonia and one way to ensuring that we keep our nature island which we boast of and invite all our, all, all our friends and I'm not speaking to for the Minister of Tourism but it is one way that we can um, ensure that Dominica is clean and green to invite our visitors and to take pride, just our own pride, taking pride in ourselves and ensuring that Dominica is clean and green. So don't just wait for National Day of Community Service. It's always an exciting time. It is always a time that we really want to help to, to play our part in the development of Dominica. But we can start to do that even before then. Mr. Speaker, on the gender affairs in my ministry, we want to say that we are looking out for both the men and the women. And um, a number of achievements we have been able to get there. We are, um, have a final draft updated of a, a final draft updated in the national gender policy and action plan. We can say also that there is a national action plan on gender violence and a national strategic plan for gender mainstreaming. We have been able to do a lot of education and awareness. We had a number of programs. Those of you who remember that we had the Blow Your Horn motorcade and uh, Yes, um, the, um, the, the, the pan rep from Cassie Bruce who spoke at that program, and it was a, a wonderful program. And we do not just want us to be excited about it on the day, but we also want us to also remember that we are not going to stand for violence and crime in our country. It, it is it's neither against man, neither against woman or child. And we will not stand for it, Madam Speaker. And that is why I was one of the first to stand up to talk against when leaders want to stand up and be freely talking about what they can do violently. We cannot stand for that, Madam Speaker. We have a responsibility to ensure that we are mentors of the youth and the other persons who put us here as leaders, we have a responsibility and we have to take our responsibility serious. Um, the parliament is, is, is not a matter of, of joke or playing around with. It is the highest of the land and we have to know what, how we conduct ourselves and how we carry ourselves um, in and out of parliament. And so where I appeal again to all of us, to all of us, that we let us, let us, let us ensure that we minimize whatever um, um, gender-based violence, we let us minimize it in our country, and let us all try to live in peace and in harmony. We will always, always have things coming among ourselves. There will be little altercations and so on. But at, at, at best, let us try to live in peace and harmony. Mr. Speaker, I also want to, to give a little um, hands up to the Argentina um, um, government who is going to provide some technical assistance um, with the operation of a safe house for battered men and women. And Mr. Speaker, some people think that, uh, yes, some of our men do get battered. And my, some of my colleagues will believe that I do not really. But I am concerned. Some of, sometimes, Mr. Speaker, they are not really, they are ashamed of saying it. But reports do reach us. Reports do reach us um, that some of our men do get battered by women. And our women do get battered by men. But more so, the women 
And uh, so, my, Mr. Speaker, um, I am appealing to all of us that we should stop this form of violence against each other. Yes, battering, battering against men and battering against women. And Mr. Speaker, I am talking gender, say, and women, man and, and girl also. But um, Mr. Speaker, it more, more or less happens to women. And we, we really need to have a safe home that if there is, um, we, we prevent the woman from even getting battered. We, we have somewhere where we can place our men or place our women before it becomes real bad. Mr. Speaker, I want to touch a little on our adult education program. It's also a program I'm very proud of and supported by the government. Um, there was a technical mission from Cuba with plans um, to commence a Yes I Can program. It is really a literacy program um, using video and helping all of our people to be able to read and write. Knowledge is power. And if our people can read and write, if they can think independently and objectively, Madam Speaker, we have a better Dominica to live in. And so I want to congratulate the adult education and also to congratulate the government for the support that it has been giving us to, to um, have our literacy programs. And some of them, we have a number of them going all over the country. Um, we also have the CCLC program and you know what, I would also advise some persons who really want to be leaders to also join the adult education program, um, probably that will help because they do not on also only teach to read and write, but they also teach to how to conduct yourselves. And when you become educated, you also learn how to be able to conduct yourself. Well, I said leaders who, who need to be able to go back to school. Anybody who needs to be able to go back to school, we will welcome them at the, at the um, adult education classes. We, we have um, also this summer a program going on, a summer program going on, and we also have the CSEC program. We have it in many of our communities, and uh, my colleagues, I'm sure, might have looked out or hear some of those programs going on. We have in Marigat, we have in Westley, we have in Woodford Hill, Benz, the Carib Territory, Grand Bay, we have in La Plain, Layou, and as a matter of fact, 177 females and 43 males are presently enrolled in a program a total of 220 persons. So I already said from the womb to the tomb, we look after our people. We had a number of uh, um, impressive classes under the adult education um, classes. And I, I really beg of our persons, instead of sitting down and saying that I dropped out of school and I cannot go back, the government has made the effort to be able to have this going for the people of Dominica. And here are some of the, the passes that were received. Um, in English, we received under the adult education 68% pass. In maths, 65% passes. Accounts, 81.8%. In principles of business, 63%. In social studies, 72.2%. Office administration, 60%. Human so, um, and social biology, 100%. French, 100%. And Spanish, 100%. So very impressive passes with the adult education um, classes. We also do a capacity enhancement and empowerment program. And we call that SIP. And in many of our, our um, communities, 
We have SIB going on in St. Joseph, in Lyo, in Dubic, in Penville, Thibault, Vakers, Benz, Gotha, Tarish, almost all over Dominica, Stock Farm, Focolay, Portsmouth. And we have a 183 participants taking um, part in that. So leaving school or dropping out of school doesn't entitle you to just sit on the road and just say that all is, all is lost, all is not lost. Much is happening um, in our adult education program under my ministry, and much is happening through the Commonwealth and um, through the government of Dominica, and we should take advantage of those um, programs. I also want to, to um, thank the adult education and the Ministry of, of Social Services for particularly acceding to um, capacity building in my constituency, but there were some other constituency that also benefited, it, benefited from it. And um, they were there, um, they did other programs, so it is not only the academic programs, but we also have a lot of skill programs going on and um, in computer training, food preparation, electricity, plumbing, all of this we are doing to be able to make sure that we develop the people of Dominica. Any country um, and with people who are self-developed is augurs well for the country. And we also had some intervention programs in acting prime minister in your constituency of Silver Lake. We had this. We had some also going in some other places. We also had some going in Wesley. And another program that I was very happy about is the parenting program. We all know that when we become program, when we become parents, when we have our children and we deliver, they are not delivered with a manual of how to take care of them. And so we think that empowering our parents and letting our parents um, um, be able to know how to look after their children um, will do better and for less of our dropouts and for some children going wrong socially. And this has worked very well. The parents have thanked us um, quite a lot uh, Mr. Speaker, for those programs, and uh, we um, invite other persons as the budget is passed, and we continue those programs. Parents, please, when you hear about the parenting program in your area, that you ensure that you follow those programs. Mr. Speaker, there is a million dollars for cooperatives. It was the last day. We have asked, and let me congratulate before I go further, let me congratulate the newest cooperative that just came on board, the Souls Multipurpose Cooperative of Woodford Hill. I congratulate them. It's a group of young people coming together, um, not waiting to, be, to, to get jobs particularly from the government. The government cannot give everybody a job. We cannot all be public servants but they saw that they could come together and uh, with the support also of NDFD and uh, the NEP, and we just were able to, to um, launch them as a cooperative. And uh, they, I think, are very excited and very committed to what they are doing. And so I say cooperative is, is, is one model that we can have in the country, and it is a model that a number of persons have envied Dominica about to be able to bring about um, livelihood for many, many people. And we have some in, in Dailies and some other persons. We have the Salisbury Fisheries Group. We have um, the Woodford Hill Livestock Farmers and many more. I call those that I can remember and those from my constituency because I remember them. We also have the Cocoa Farmers of Marigot and the Farmers Group of, of Bells. And let me say um, how glad we were also 
when the farmers all over the country were able to receive fertilizer to boost the growing of their crops, and that also includes the farmers of Wesley and Woodford Hill. The, under the basic needs trust fund, Mr. Speaker, this is another um, um, area of my ministry which undertakes poverty reduction initiatives in collaboration with communities through the establishment of necessary community-based infrastructure. And a lot of, of, of the water sub, the supply, like for example the Shufford water supply, and that cost us over a million dollars. And we also have, and all of that coming from the Caribbean Bank, we have a number of, of others, um, Shufford, I, Grand Four. Grand Four is another area, and over a, a, a million dollars. And works have been completed there. And we say thanks to CDB and also to the government of Dominica. Mr. Speaker, a, a respite center, and Ian, that is in your constituency, for children with disabilities, and uh, that is to be housed a chance. And that is going to cost us over $1 million. And Mr. Speaker, I am very, very happy for this center because there are so many parents. You know, when we have children with disabilities, it is not always, it is, it is a, it is a 24 seven job. And you must have some sort of center where the parents at least can leave their children and knowing that they will be well taken care of and at least get some sort of respite, you know? And um, <clears throat> there are some other infrastructure projects under the BNTF Trust Fund. We have the, the Teyam um, Road in Rivier Siric. We have the Oast Old Hospital Road that was completed in Grand Bay. Um, in Point Michel, we had the Point Michel Resource Center. In Coso, we have Delis, we have the Coso Road, and Rivier Siric Resource Center, and the Mon Fregan Assess River. Mr. Speaker, quite a lot have been going on under the ministry through this government. And we also had a number of skills training under BNTF, and this will also continue under the new budget, with the new budget being passed. Mr. Speaker, with BNTF, um, a number of persons probably still listen, but we, we, we have BNTF 6 still in place, and other than the, the respite center on, on, in, in Chance, we have the Southeast Produce Market in La Plain that is coming up. We have the Wesley Resource Center. And for some persons, Mr. Speaker, who cannot wait, the Resource Center will come to Wesley. And we just have to wait so that the process is being done. So that um, CDB, it takes the time to do whatever it has to do and to do it well. And so we wait on that. And there are some persons who keep on, especially on the opposition, pushing forward and saying, it will not happen. And teacher, God just fooling all you. Don't bother with that. It is on paper, black and white, in black and white, and it will come. And uh, the Penville Community Resource Center also, um, there will be the Delis Community Preschool, the Geneva Craft Market to come, the Pichler Resource Center and the Layu Public Convenience. Right? It's ongoing. It started already. So very good. And we also have some skills training that will take place in Grand Bay. This is coming up for you. But Mr. Speaker, let me just take some time to concentrate a bit on my constituency. And Mr. Speaker, for 
it is, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is knowledge, Mr. Speaker, that I will no longer be the person going up in the, in the Wesley constituency. But Mr. Speaker, let me give notice to everyone. And I also heard um, the leader of the opposition, instead of he had debated the, the budget, he was talking, but he has a right to, to talk about surgery. That's all he could have talked about because the budget was already debated, or his budget was already debated. And they sent him there. As a matter of fact, they had to walk out. They had nothing to say, so they walked out. But let me say to him, because he said that he asked for, that is the only thing that he really wanted to have asked for, a sanitary laborer for Salisbury, although, although there is one already. And so when I said to him, he couldn't get another one, he shouted to me that, Ezekiel Bazi will give it to him. Let me tell him I'll make it my personal project to ensure that Ezekiel Bazi is nowhere near to be able to give it to him. It will be my personal project. And let me say to, to, to the persons that even though I will not be the candidate, I'll be right there in the constituency. I'm still your pal rep, and I'll still be working as hard as, as ever for the constituency of Wesley. And uh, that includes Wesley and Woodford Hill. I call them the two beautiful Ws. And let me thank my people for standing with me, for always supporting me. And uh, I'm part of you, so I'm not going anywhere. I will be right there supporting you and being with you. And let me say to the government that I thank the government for giving us a fair share of the pie. And I heard other um, um, colleagues saying that people say that nothing was done in the constituency. That is those who need to go to Cuba, because even though they go to Dominica, no, Dominica can do nothing for their eyes. And the thing about it is that even though people say words, and the evidence is there, there is nothing you can do about it. In infrastructure, uh, Mr. Speaker, just talking about roads, because first of all, when I met that constituency, it was a constituency that was neglected, totally neglected, with an absentee parliamentarian. The people knew nothing about what parliamentarians used to do. They only know about it with what I, the parliamentarian, Gloria Chillingford, did for the people of West Sea, I would put it. And so, Mr. Speaker, I did it with pride. I did it with love, a labor of love. And Mr. Speaker, in no constituency you can get everything all of the time. But I think this government has been good to the Wesley constituency. Mr. Sp Mr. Speaker, I met roads in total disrepair. The main road going up to, to, to Woodford Hill Ambulances were not even going there after a time. There was a, the road in Small Farm where persons had to take one shoe to go out to the main road and have their, their especially school children, to have a, a, another pair of shoe to be able to go wherever it is. You know, so you have to walk one with one and then walk with the other. And the first thing we did was to ensure that that piece of road was done, solid as ever. After almost nine years, it is still standing strong. And the same thing too with the main road in Wesley. Then we had some access roads. The farmers did not know what again to do for their vehicles and uh, to be able to take their crops out of Joburton. We have done that road. We have done Joburton. We have also done um, Mango Gutter, I'm trying to say them off my head, but just in case I forget, I'm just looking. We have done Joburton, we have done Mango Gutter, we have done parts of Simpa, and under the BAM, the BAM is still becoming, Simpa is one of the roads to be done under the BAM. Mon Ramie, that was a promise to the people, it is to be done under the BAM, and also Mon Ramie is a road to be done also on, on the BNTF 7. 
it is one of the, 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 the projects approved. So the people of Wood Fertile are hardworking people. A set of people I'm very proud of, both Wesley and Wood Fertile. But the farmers there, they are very hardworking and they will get their road because when um, um, the, the persons went around to investigate and to find out what was happening, they were able to proudly say those are farmers that really need their roads. Even before that, the road of Batis in Wesley was done and the Hunt Road. Me, um, Mr. Speaker, all of that under my watch. Paradise View in Wesley under my watch. You know, all of that. Mr. Speaker, there was in Woodford Hill, we also, infrastructure, we built, we just built a, a washroom facility for those persons. And we, we, we probably will not even need it now because last year we were able to supply 10 families with washrooms. As a matter of fact, I set the ball rolling for washrooms in Dominica, given to me by the Prime Minister. And funny enough, it was the, the song that they had, which made washrooms a little even more popular, came from somebody in Wesley who sang it. But he had a right to, because he was seeing what was happening. Scare it, give people washrooms. And that, that, that Madam Speaker, it spells, it spells a lot. It spells a lot for the caring of our people, for the health of our people, for the pride of our people, for the sanitation, Mr. Speaker. Because, Mr. Speaker, a washroom, and many of them will be coming because it's in the, more will be coming in the budget. Washroom is not something that it's supposed to be a luxury for only who, whose home has a pool or who has a free bedroom house. It, it, is, it is something that every single person should, should, should get, Mr. Speaker. And I remember all labor rights, and particularly in small farm, when they, one of the things that when I, 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 I walked among them and I listened to them, they always spoke about that was one of the things that some of the well-to-do UWP opposition persons would tell them about. Well, we have provided it for, we have provided it for them, and we are happy to do that, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when I'm um, under my watch, the, the, it was under um, the, no, the education minister, Ambassador Vincent Henderson, under the watch, under my watch, when he was able to provide a bus for the people of Wesley and Woodford Hill to go down to school in Londonderry. Londonderry is about a mile's walk. But the children used to be exposed to the elements um, out there, sun, rain, whatever, to be able to go to school. But what, what struck me was when the parents themselves could tell me the savings they were able to make in being having a bus to take their children to school. Mr. Speaker, that is money in their pocket. It is not like the persons who come and tell me, I'm, the spa, I'm, I'm, I'm Pine the Sky Project, and they will give you money in the pocket, and you do not know where the money is coming. The money is there in the pocket of the parents. So if you save $60 a month for one child, and if you say, you, if you... You have five minutes left.
Mr. Speaker, I did not understand, but I, I hope my people, I'm going to repeat it because my mic was off. I don't know why. But five in Grambling, 10 in Cuba, three in Morocco, and that is why the minister doesn't want to give me any more, but two coming up so Grambling, and you promised me, so we will get them. Two in, two, two in China, Mr. Speaker, we have given 10 persons assistance. Um, UWE, Canada, Trinidad, Jamaica, Barbados. Minister, Mr. Speaker, when you educate someone, you give them a fish for life. Mr. Speaker, we cannot do more than that. And this is only one constituency. We have 21. So when persons talking about nothing or teacher God didn't do anything or, or whatever it is, they, they miss, they, they, yes, they have to wheel and come again. I always tell them that, wheel and come again. And on, under the NEP, because I know um, I do not intend to go longer, under the NEP, we got our share. 24 persons are now working and receiving a monthly salary under the NEP program. Not one of them called me and tell me they didn't get their salary. We have three of them, Mr. Speaker, under the internship program. We have um, four of them under the education mentorship program. We have seven of them under the community program. And we have 10 of them under the farming program. And one of the things that gave me satisfaction as a pal rep was to hear the young guys, when persons saying about young people do not want to go back to work, who gave a testimony of saying how proud they were to be able to, give, to be given their tools and to be able to be given land to be able to go back into the farming, um, 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 into farming, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, there is much more. Mr. Speaker, when under my watch, um, before the Labour Party government came into power, the Barrigat, as the, 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 the airport, you could hardly find one Wesley or Wood 40 person working at the airport. We have put in there about eight of them under the airport, we're receiving. And so as you go along, we have been able to ensure that our people are educated, they have received jobs, they have money in their pocket, Mr. Speaker, they are educated, we look after their, their welfare, their sanitation, Mr. Speaker, and um, there is just so much that we have done for this as a government, for this constituency. And so, in closing, Mr. Speaker, let me express my thanks to the staff um, amidst all of the challenges, the staff of my ministry, and thanks to all our, our social partners, thanks to the government, thanks to UNICEF, to UN Women, to U o OECS, to USAID, and all of those persons who work together to make the social aspect of the lives of Dominica a better one. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise also to make my contribution towards the 2014-2015 budget estimate of the Commonwealth of Dominica. And in doing so, of course, to lend my support to the measures um, therein. But before I begin, I would just like to take a few minutes to reach out to my, the constituents or the residents of the Pitt Servant constituency, especially those who over the course of the past um, two to three days keep on calling, messaging, when are you speaking, when are you speaking? And I'm talking about the residents from, well, Point Milat in the, all the way to Bellevue, Chopin, all the villages and hamlets in between Petit Savan, Bagatel, Fort Saint Jean Fab, Stowe, Dubic, Maranatha Square, Pichler, and Bellevue Chopin. I would also like to um, congratulate Mr. Speaker, take this opportunity to congratulate all the young people of all the young people of the land. 
the recent graduates from the various schools, um, both primary, secondary, and of course, the state college. Those who start exams recently, wish them luck, thus the results have not been made available. And of course, the grade six national assessment exam, CETAS. And of course, special mention to the students of the PD7 primary school, where we received two scholarships from what I recall and two bursars out of 12 students, which I think is an excellent ratio, success ratio. And of course, special mention to this year's top, top achiever, Miss Precious Rivier, Mr. Speaker, who also happens to be by this by no coincidence. I guess um, hard work and intelligence runs in the family, Mr. Speaker. I would also like to touch a reach out to a very special group of young people, Mr. Speaker, who myself, together with the Honorable Member for, from St. Joseph, Ms. Charles Senator Jajak, had had the responsibility of interacting for the past months or so. And I'm talking about the youth arm of the Dominican Labour Party, the LYU. A remarkable group of young people, Mr. Speaker, and I'm sure I'm, my, my friend Calvadero can allude to that, full of energy who have recognized, Mr. Speaker, that this Labour Party administration is still the party of choice because of the number of programs and the hope that we bring to young people. They have virtually taken over the, the campaign, although none of us know, know what time or what the, the, the hour of election, but the energy and the intelligence of these young people should not be, cannot be underscored, Mr. Speaker. Also, like my cousin Kelvin Dara, I made a, I made a note, I made a note here of also welcoming the, the young senator from St. Joseph, the new senator to the house. And yeah, I know she's not here, but I'm just, I just, I think it's worth mentioning, and hoping that she would have reason to display a better sense of maturity and discipline than her colleagues, and of course, in doing so, make a more meaningful contribution to the house, thus earning a pay. But we saw what happened, um, Mr. Speaker. We saw that the young lady, from the time she stepped in, of course she looked like she was excited to be in the house and wanted to make a contribution. In fact, between herself and the Senator Green, Mr. Sejar, they probably used up about a dozen pens, taking notes, and, and, and a number of um, notepads, taking notes. And you could see she was preparing herself, um, Mr. Speaker, to make a contribution. But um, unfortunately, Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, she listened to the likes of the opposition leader who, speaking of him, we listened to his pathetic rebuttal at the budget last year. I mean, we, we all remember that fiasco. And just when you think it couldn't get worse, just when you think that he would have had a whole year to at least every day sit down, make some notes, because like, of course you know that he's on the block everywhere talking and with Bravado and on Facebook, etc. If you could just take a few minutes every day in between budgets, whole year, 365 days every year, to at least try to prepare himself better. Right. And you could see that he ran out not because he felt that he had to run out. He was very uncomfortable. You could see that, I mean, from the moment um, the opposition leaders to, 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 to speak, Mr. Speaker, that he, had, he was like a fish out of water, poor guy. So, of course, the whole issue of Danny Logan, the motion put forward, put forward, of course, was just an excuse for him to run away from, the, from, from this house. And of course, Senator Williams, I hope you're listening, okay? I'm sorry to say that he lost an opportunity to show the electorate of St. Joseph what is it that you could have offered them. And I'm sure that when, when, this, um, when the date is announced and the time comes, the people of St. Joseph will remember that. Madam Speaker, I would like to also congratulate the Minister of Finance and his staff for putting together such a remarkable budget. We all know the issues, the global financial meltdown that we've that we also hear in small island developing states like ours. We also feel the blunt of it. And it's not to gloat or to celebrate over others' misfortunes, but we hear what's happening, Mr. Speaker, in other Caribbean countries, even our sister islands of ours, Mamatia economies in Europe. We hear what's happening. So to put together such a budget where we have no new taxes. In fact, we have a reduction in, in, in taxes because you would have heard the Minister of Finance put forward proposals to increase the tax, the tax um, threshold. Okay, so to put together such a budget, and of course we hear the opposition scoff at some of the measures, the, 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 the disposable diapers measures, 
they laugh at it. But Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, sorry, clearly these are people who are not in tune. They are not on the ground. They do not listen. They do not know. They are unaware of the sufferings of the everyday, what I like to refer to, Joe public. They are not aware because this budget, in addition to a number of exciting capital projects, also touches the lives. It also goes to touch the lives of the everyday man. We heard them scoff also at the whole um, sanitation project. What we refer to as the eradication of pit latrines. They laughed at it. But a few weeks later, we saw the article, of course, on, on the internet where the United Nations itself launched a World Toilet Day. That is in, in order to recognize the sanitation and the health issues posed by pit latrines. And those of us who, who, were, un, who were unfortunate enough, for what the misfortune rather, okay, to, to, to use pit latrines can allude to the discomfort of this. So obviously, Mr. Speaker, the, the, um, the opposition have shown time and time again that they are not in tune with what, what is happening, the reality on the ground. We are the Calypsonians some time ago saying we cannot eat concrete. And we are aware of that we cannot eat concrete. So while we do the concrete, we do the beautiful structure, the beautiful roads, we also have shown the people that we, we have the most intimate needs of the, as I said, the everyday man on the street. We have the needs and we listen to their pleas. The measures towards reducing um, the VAT and service charge in the hospitality industry, Mr. Speaker, is also an, a measure I'm sure that a lot of the people in the private sector and the hotel industry would have welcomed. But as, um, as they say, Mr. Speaker, the show must go on. And Yes, it would be the house must go on and for the past four years I mean we have done the people's business without any contribution from the opposition so they be in there or they not be in there it really doesn't make a difference because the opposition cannot take credit for any meaningful contribution towards the country's development for the past four to five years Mr. Speaker and the results of course of the last general election in 2009 sorry showed that and the result in 2000, well, whenever it's called, Mr. Speaker is going to show that the Dominica electorate is aware of what's at stake because of the no contest, the no show of the opposition and the lives. And we need to continue doing the work, Mr. Speaker, because the lives and the survival of many of our people depend on this Labour Party administration remaining in power, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, back to the subject at hand, which is the 2014-2015 budget estimates. And I will take the next few minutes to describe briefly as to my, my stewardship at the ministerial level and, of course, at the constituency level. Fledgling ministry, Mr. Speaker, this um, grouping of portfolios put together after the last general election. And, of course, I remember the comments and listening to people, I mean, what is this? Um, what is this ministry all about? But then again, the Labour Party, like everything else, has shown that it had the vision, Mr. Speaker. The vision that issues of environment and sustainable development, the importance that these issues were taken at the, on the international stage and in political discussions, and the results of this ministry are starting, are starting to show. In other words, the work of this ministry is starting to be a fruit. During the period on the review, Mr. Speaker, the Fisheries Division, of course, has embarked on a number of programs and activities aimed at the generation of income, creation of employment, of course the enhancement of fish quality. We know a lot is being spoken recent, um, these days of um, the quality, what they call um, sanitary, phytosanitary measures, promotion in the area of fish consumption and the local economies, management of invasive species, and overall management of the fishery resource of Dominica and the local industry by extension. For the year under review, we experienced a relatively stable record of fish landings, which also reflects a slight reduction in production as, com as compared to the last year. We think that this is attributed to a reduction in the number of what they call FADs, fish aggregating devices in operation, as well as a change in ocean current and the emerging issues of climate change, which of course triggers effects of migration and mating habits of our, of our, of our pelagics, both coastal and, and ocean pelagics. Also of concern to the fisheries division, of course, is the, is the slight increase in the volume of fish imports observed during the current um, reporting period. An estimated 1.367 million pounds of fish was landed over the 2013-2014 period. The highest being the highest um, fish production by land inside occurred in Marigot, followed by Portsmouth and Scorzet. 
The volume of fresh fish import, as I said earlier, of course, grew by 4%. And of course, this is a little worrying. And we have to, of course, try to see how we can put measures in place to ensure that we consume the fish that we land here in Dominica. In other words, eat what we, the, the same general concept of eat what we grow. In terms of training and development, the fisheries division continue to, to train our, our fishermen. And as I say all the time, no longer is fisheries regarded as a from sea to port or from sea to the rum shop type of activity. Fisheries can now be regarded as a career. And then we have trained or we try to educate our fishermen into you'll see in the fisheries activities as a career, one where they can earn an income, build their homes, buy their vehicles, send their children to school, etc. And the fisheries development, the fisheries division, sorry had been doing a wonderful job so far. Through our BFTC, what we call our basic fisherman training course, in collaboration with the Coast Guard, Social Security, the banks, bureaus of standards, environmental health, a number of institutions, persons wishing to, to undertake fisheries as a career receive training on various aspects of fisheries, development and management, and include subject areas such as safety at sea, Small business management, very important to be able to pay their social security dues to, you know, the, on their retirement, they know that they have something, something to live on. As I said, the importance of social, social security contributions. Okay, now the course is designed to prepare the fishermen for the challenge in running a successful business, fishing business, and to engage them in responsible fishing, best practices, sustainable fishing, in order to ensure that there is fishery stock available for future generations. Of course, our BFTC, our BFTC is the envy of the Caribbean, and the Fisheries Division has had them back on a number of training programs towards our, um, sorry, to our regional um, counterparts. A number of other programs undertaken by the Fisheries Division would be the Eat Fish program, where we encourage, especially in schools, where we encourage the young people the importance of fresh fish fish as a main um, product, as a main um, protein, as a main protein um, source. Partnership programs. We've been involved in a number of partnership programs in the fishery sector with JICA. And I want to take a minute or two to, to speak to our Japanese friends who over the years, Mr. Speaker, have made tremendous contribution towards the development of the fishery sector. This is not to be, Madam Speaker, taken for granted the contribution of the Japanese government through, Jap through JICA, that is Japanese International Cooperation Agency, have made, especially in the area of technical expertise to our fishermen. Yes, we've seen the, we've seen the results of fisheries um, facilities, the complex, the most recent one being in Portsmouth, Mr. Douglas. And we, we see these things, okay, but there are a lot, there's a lot going on, Mr. Speaker, that the Japanese are involved in that we do not see. And I'm talking about the expertise that they, that, that they lend to our fisher folks and our and our people in providing the, this type of um, exercises. We also, have a number of other, we also have a number of other partners. The University of Florida entered into a partnership with us and the CRFM to strengthen the capacity of the fisher folk organization. We're talking about the cooperatives, etc. The Magdalisa project, which is a mud fish aggregating device in the Lesser Antilles, launched in Dominica in February 2012. And this project involves the launching of two other deployment, rather, of what they call two mega fads, what they call smart fads, in the waters of Dominica to be used by the local fishermen. Now, these fads are constructed from what they call heavy duty, durable materials, and they equip with radar reflectors and GPS locators. And these fads can, using our computer, we can, of course, tell the location and also all the other climatic um, conditions associated in and around this fad. The CRFM, which is the Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism, which is the regional branch given the mandate by the heads of state of the CARICOM countries to deal with issues of um, pertaining to fisheries. Of course, we have in the pipeline for the longest what they call the Common Regional Fisheries Policy, which is about to be, or we hopefully will be endorsed by the heads at the next, um, regional, at the next regional meeting. We've done a lot of work in the area of resource conservation. We know about our marine reserve at um, the Soufrière, Soufrière Scottsdale Marine Reserve. And currently, a project is ongoing where we hope to step up, to step up, to beef up these, 
the management of, of these marine reserves because we understand that in order to ensure the survival of the fishery sector, we have to ensure that the resource is used properly and used in a sustainable way. Invasive species such as a lionfish, we would have heard a lot of it recently. And just, and just the other day, I think I visited a fish place in Point Michel, um, Honorable Martin, where they have lionfish on the menu. And this is commendable because while the lionfish is a very invas invasive species and also very toxic, if prepared in the right way, we, it can be used as a, as, as a food source. And I, see, I know a number of restaurants and, and bars and hotels here you now would have lionfish as a regular part of the, of the, um, of the menu. The Ministry of Environment, as I said earlier, Mr. Speaker, as I said, in recent years, we've seen the establishment of these ministries and portfolios to deal with the emerging issues of sustainable development, climate change, etc., and all its negative impacts, environmental degradation. And the, the issue of climate change, Mr. Is, of, is, of, um, is not new to us. I think over the past years, the Environmental Unit, the Ministry of Environment, would have done, sorry, a tremendous job in educating the Dominican public on the issues of climate change. And we are now starting to feel the effects of climate change. In other words, climate change is real. So where was 10, 15 years ago, we would have heard a few folks talking about climate change, Mr. Speaker. And I mean, Sayoka Palekot, what are they talking about? Right now, we are starting to feel the effects of climate change. We saw the weather events on the West Coast on the and, and, and Blackmore um, two years ago. Flooding on the West Coast. And I mean, looking at the photos on, on the internet of, of cars and, and floating, flooding. I mean, 10 to 15 years ago, if you spoke about flooding in Dominica, people would, would say you're mad. I know. Okay, but we see this happening. And then Honorable Daru, or rather the Honorable Member from, from St. Jude, spoke about two, two quarter million, three hundred thousand dollars we spend, we as a government spend in, in, in restoring boats and engines and equipment to the fishermen of Layu, of course, whom the storm took and um, caught on the And this is the hallmark of this Labour Party administration, Mr. Speaker. I've repeated that when it comes to fisheries, we, we act as an insurance company, but we're not receiving any premium. In other words, they call on us to replace, to pay back, but we have never re received one single installment or, or, or of subscription of the insurance company. But this is a human, this is a human part of this administration where we understand that we are not going to leave anybody stranded because we understand the importance of the fishermen and the fishery sector to Dominica's economy. First of all, as food security, and number two, the, the economic importance of the fishery sector should never be underscored. Okay, we have to talk about it. The purchase of boats and, and engines, the purchase of fuel, and of course, we can talk about the Petro Caribbean Initiative, where a number of feeding stations have been, have been constructed, the most recent one again in Honorable St. Martin in Scott's Head. And we hear the testimonies of the, fish, of the fishermen who, who before would have had to travel to Tong miles and miles, sometimes, sometimes much to the embarrassment, being, be, be, being embarrassed by bus drivers and, and other vehicle owners alike. Whereas now they would have the fuel available right here, close to the landing site, available. And we need to underscore, as I said, we need to underscore the, the, the economic importance of, of the fishery sector. And Petro Carib have um, honorable ushery. The Petro Carib initiative have brought some sort of relief to these fishermen. And then, and then the, 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 the wonderful thing about this Petro Carib initiative, Mr. Speaker, would be that these facilities are being managed by the fishermen themselves, by the fisheries group, by the fisheries cooperatives. It means that whatever profits are made, whatever profits are made on the markup of the sale of the gas, and also the rebate, which is being given by Petrocarib for every gallon of gas sold, now goes back into the coffers of the respective cooperatives so they can use it towards the activities, whether the social activities, helping their, their members, etc. So we continue to battle, as I said, with the issues of, of climate change. Small island developing states such as Dominica is by no, is by no, is by not, is by the choice of ours that we find ourselves placed in the in, in, the, um, in, 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 in that part of the world, that region of the world, where every year we are subjected to, to hurricanes and weather events from the Atlantic. And of course, with the advent of climate change, we see that these weather events are becoming more erratic, they are becoming more intense. And what this does, um, Mr. Speaker, and it's very important, which is why later down in, later down in, my, in my presentation, I'm going to speak about this exciting PPCR and DVRP World Bank CIF project, where we have now taken steps, we are going to take steps to ensure that we prepare ourselves adequately for these adverse weather events. 
And Mr. Speaker, it, 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 as I said, it is through no fault of ours that we find ourselves to, to these weather events every year. And what this does is that monies, Mr. Speaker, that were earmarked for new developments, new projects, every year now has to be re-diverted towards restoration. So every time we have one of these events, whether the, the, the foreseen events, whether the planned ones or the, or, or the unforeseen one because of climate change, it puts us back somewhat. Because it means that a project, a housing project, some other project that we would have planned to do, a road somewhere to, towards elevated our people, this money is about to be re-diverted towards restoration. So it's very important that we, the people of Dominica, the electorate, we, we um, familiarize ourselves and educate ourselves with the whole issue of climate change and to take the necessary measures. And later on, I will speak about our, our national land use policy, which of course incorporates these issues of climate change. Where Cabinet has been, has been um, provided, or has been presented rather, with a draft copy of a national land, um, land use policy, a CDB project, a um, CDB funded project. And now the next step is on endorsement by Cabinet, moving to what they call a national physical development plan, where zoning of areas for residential agriculture areas is now going to be produced. And we heard the leader of the opposition talking about zoning. So clearly, you, you can see that they're out of tune. They take no time to find out what is really happening. But instead, they come here and then they talk and they talk and they talk. OK? Yes, like a fish out of water. So as I said, we are small island developing states. We, the issue of climate change um, is, is a serious issue for us, especially in the Caribbean, Caribbean seas, what like the good Caribbean small island developing states. A big main issue for us, as I said, because of the adverse weather events and also because of our fragile economies. And of course, we know that um, over the years, the developed and more industrialized nations would have committed into, into, um, into um, putting monies into funds to allow us to combat climate change. Of course, this has not been happening, but we're hoping that sometime in the course of this year, probably early next year, the much talked about green fund will kick in so we can start um, capitalizing and taking advantage of these monies available for us. Because at the end of the day, Mr. Speaker, small islands like ours had very little to do with the, with, with the, with the, um, with the whole issue of, of climate change. Because those of us who understand the science behind climate change would know that a lot of it is attributed to what they call the emission of greenhouse gases. We're talking about exhaust from industries, vehicles, etc. So the contribution that we make toward these greenhouse, these greenhouse gases is minimal or negligible. So the, we are calling on the industrialized nations, and we do that every year. We attend the, the United Nations um, Convention for Climate Change. Every year we have a study table, a whole team of ours. We go in there where we group up together the other small island developing states, both from the Caribbean, the Pacific, etc., and we put our case forward. And we are hoping that the international community, especially the industrialized nations and the more, the more developed countries, can hear our cry and, and, and start living up to their commitment. Earlier on, Mr. Speaker, I spoke about the PPCR or DVRP, the Pilot Program for Climate Change and the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project. After three years of talk and preparation, we have completed what we call our Low Carbon Climate Resilient Development Strategy. And this is a collaborative effort between all the stakeholders here in Dominica. Remember three years ago when we did launch this program at the Fort Young Hotel, where we're calling all the various stakeholders, the local government, environmental health, everybody came together, where we informed them that we had potential monies available towards addressing the whole issues of climate change and reducing disaster risk here in Dominica. Since then, three years after, the government of Dominica entered into agreement with the World Bank for the implementation of a US $38 million, what they call DVRP, Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project. And you would know that a few weeks ago, the Minister of Finance himself signed, signed this agreement with the World Bank and the Climate Investment Fund towards the installation of this project. And if we go to the budget estimate before us, we'll see that almost $10 million have already been attributed, hoping to, to harvest what we call the low-lying fruits in this new financial year. And by the low-lying fruits, I mean probably the preparation of some of the major infrastructural projects, the construction of storm drains, and some of the other smaller projects. And, and, and the, the good thing about this, um, Mr. Speaker, is that some of this money, grant money, and the other what they call concessionary loans, 0.5% interest. In other words, the next best thing to grant money. 
It is expected that this project will undertake major roads and related physical infrastructure to include, and I know my good friend um, Johnson Drago, the member of for Castle Bruce, likes to hear about this project, to include improvements in the eastern and other parts of the country as follows. Poncasse to Boadiab, Boadiab to Castle Bruce, Castle Bruce to Petit Souffre, Castle Bruce to Hatton Garden to include the Caribbean territory and Akinson. It will also include, and I'm sure my constituents, for those of you who want to know what is it that the budget has in store for us, the big phase one cliff stabilization and road project. That's right. Because we have understood that these areas, that, that aforementioned areas, Mr. Speaker, have been identified as some of the most vulnerable areas in terms of landslides, etc. The Honorable um, Member for Castle Bruce, um, a few, two years ago, I think, would have had the most fortune of uh, having loss of life or lives. Nice. Lives in the Petit Souffre area. So we, so we, the government, um, are showing our maturity and our responsibility in putting steps. And of course, we, we, we were criticized for, for this project. We heard the usual suspects, the, what I like to turn them, I remember the term, um, the term I used to describe them, Honorable Daru. Um, when I get it, I will come back to it. Okay, the usual suspects. Okay, the sinister faces. We, 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 yeah, they, they, they click him on the ear. In fact, they tried to derail this process right into the World Bank and the Climate Investment Facility, advising them that, yeah, it is that we are taking environment and green money towards building roads. Yeah. Not taking time off to understand that in, that, that in, 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 in these interventions, Madam Mr. Speaker, okay, we are now going to protect okay, lives and property, disaster mitigation. Okay, so... So they, they, they prayed about it, they, they did all sorts of about it, they wrote to the World Bank, they wrote to whoever, but as I said, the international community or the governments, these governments have shown that we are fiscally responsible mm -hmm. and that's why they continue to trust us and continue to put money in our hands to do the work of the people and they will continue doing so in spite of the opposition trying their best to, to, um, to derail these projects. West Coast water projects under the, under the very same PPCR project. Project storage tanks and water inventory, city building, formulation of special data management systems, improving and expanding of climate change and seismic monitoring system. It should also be noted, Mr. Speaker, that the low carbon climate resilient development strategy has been submitted as a national appropriation mitigation action. Of course, this was endorsed by cabinet. It has been tabled under the United Nations framework for climate change. And it, and it is now a document now that we can now use to seek further funding. So we are hoping that this PPCR, DVRP pro project is not, will be the first of its kind, of, of, of many others. So um, speaking of the, of the, of the, of the projects, um, Mr. Speaker, and maybe if I could just maybe focus a little maybe on the Dubic area, because it's part of the constituency. This is an area, Mr. Speaker, that I remember myself in my first three, of three, three years attending secondary school in Tong. I mean, this, I think the latter two years I end up living in Tong, but the first three years I've been to travel this area on almost daily basis. And there were many times, Mr. Speaker, that I would have had not for weeks. Those of us who are familiar will know what it looks like. In Atlantic on one side and this towering cliffs on the, on the other side. So I think this is good news for the Dubic people. And not just the Dubic people, the entire South and Southeast, La Plaine and, and, and Ivor, who, who, use this, who use this as a road also to access the Southeast of the island. That this is good news for the people of the South and Southeast, that finally this area is going to be addressed. And, and I can tell it's through the efforts of their current parliamentary representative that we are finally going to see this area being addressed. And later down, Mr. Speaker, when, when I'm speaking of the constituency, we will talk about plans towards the setting up of a marine facility right in the neighborhood, right in this particular area. That we're talking about the studio big land inside. So I can already meet Mr. Speaker, I mean from where I live in Grande, I, I have a very, I have a bird's eye view of that particular area. And every day I come on the porch and I envision this sea, this sea, this sea wall and the roads in the big area leading right into this marine facility that the proposed marine facility in the store. And I think that if these things, that when these things are, are implemented, that we should see a major transformation, not of the physical landscape only, but economic landscape of the South and Southeast. Talking about jobs for people, etc. Of course, the, the PPCR and the VRP is well on the way. We have already um, installed um, the project coordinator, putting in place what they call a project coordinator unit, coordinating unit rather. 
Um, we would have heard the, we would have seen or heard the advertisements for the other personnel that we are going to be needing to the setting up of this project and coordinating unit. And a first disbursement have been advised by, by, by the staff of some almost a million US has already been sent to our coffers towards the implementation of this project management unit. Um, the United Nations Framework on Climate Change, as I said earlier, every year, every year at the, at the Conference of Parties, we ensure that we send a team. I've, I've tried my best to attend most of these meetings to ensure, Mr. Speaker, that we have a seat at the table when all these issues of climate change and all of this is, is being discussed. So we are not just about, as I said, about sitting down and pulling up by the bay, or, or as, as my, my, um, my potential opponent said on, on, on the radio session, giving people VEP as a part rep, Mr. Speaker. VEP, um, he jike, he jike, yeah, he jike riding, okay? That, that's not what we're all about. Yes, 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 we give people VEP to. Yes, I give people VEP to if I'm passing and somebody needs a VEP. Yes, I pull up by the bay from time to time and talk. But we're not just all about this, Mr. Speaker. We are about going out and talking to the people who matters, okay? Because sitting down by the bay, Mr. Speaker, and giving people VEP and driving up and down is not going to get you anywhere, okay? Because we need, we need to be able to show the capacity, which is what the PD servant voters recognize, that in years, surely, that they have some the intimate needs. Uh, my friend Johnson Jago spoke of the funerals and the, and the medical assistance. I attend to this. I attend to this also. But I've also seen that I have the capacity to go out and sit down at the table with heads of state, heads of government, and any, anybody else, and to fight for my people and to bring back results. Which is why, Mr. Speaker, that come the next election, the petit servant seat is one of the first that's going to be returned to the Dominican Labour Party. And I say that with the full confidence. And yes, sir. Madam Speaker, moving on to, to other aspects of, our, of, of the ministry. Um, we spoke about the, the land use plan and land, land use policy, rather, CDB funded project, which is right now, before, right now being reviewed by, um, by competent personnel to forward back to, to cabinet for their final endorsement and to move on into the, into the next stage of our, our, our project, which is the National Physical Development Plan. As I said, the actual zoning is going to be recommended to the government. And of course, we look forward to this physical development plan because it's in addition to it setting out lands that are suitable for specific purposes, it's also going to avoid a number of the things that we see happening, especially after adverse weather conditions, where people sometimes build in areas that we know that, 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 that are not safe for building. So all of these, the physical development plan is going to address all of these issues. Mr. Speaker, I would like to take a few minutes now to, to speak about um, my constituency. And like, of course, like others before me, every now and then, every now and then you would hear people say, of course, the, the non-supporters, okay, or the blind ones, as, as the Minister for Social Services say, that nothing is being done in the Pity 7 constituency. Mr. Speaker, I have the, I have the um, opportunity to watch every now and then this program and GIS. We are every now and then the government information service goes around with the various parliamentary representatives to highlight some of the achievements in the constituency. And every time, Mr. Speaker, the one for the PD7 constituency comes up, I sit down and I watch it, and even sometimes I surprise myself. Because everyone knows, Mr. Speaker, and my colleagues here can a little bit, I'm a very vocal person, a very, and sometimes I get a bit rough in making, case, in making a case of my constituency. But when I sit and look at the program, I tell myself, I mean, that I did all of this in just four years. And I'm sure you would have the opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to look at this program and, and we, we highlighted just some of the major projects that we, that we had in the PD7 constituency. Road repairs are ongoing, and I would like to also reach out at this moment to the, to the constituents, especially those of PD7, who have had a lot of patience in, in, in awaiting this long, this long awaited road project. Yes, the actual ongoing project has had its few hitches. But I'm just asking that they just continue with their patience a bit longer and pretty soon we should see finalization of this road project, the, the, the final ceiling, etc. All the drains, road preparations for ceiling have been done. So to just ask them to just hold on a bit longer, to just have a bit more patience. Exercise a bit, a, a bit more patience like what they've already been um, exercising for the past time. We've done major repairs to the road from Dubic to Bagatelle. Of course, there are a few areas in between that which we're hoping to address in the new financial year under some of the maintenance money from the Ministry of Public Works. We've seen the, we've seen the construction of a bypass within Pilitsevan. 
what I like to call it, the road to road is bypass. An area which, um, which I think I remember once, um, Honorable Ivor and, and Honorable Peterson had the opportunity or misfortune to use this area where we had landslides in the southeast and also the main village road within Pitt itself, and which is landslide prone, okay, were blocked. And I remember Ivor, I'm sorry, the member for, for, for Grand Four and the member for Laplin had to use this, this area. And it was basically almost impossible. I'm not sure if the, the members have had the, have had the opportunity to really return here to see some of the improvements to that bypass. In addition, it also served as an access road to the now almost complete PD7 playing field, a brand new playing field, something that the PD7 people never had, Mr. Speaker. We've seen interventions on the road from PD7 to White River, almost a million dollars spent there to improve the road surface. Road had been in a very deplorable condition for the past time, and I would like to thank also the, the contractor, Mr. Vidal, very good friend of mine, for his steadfastness and also his, um, his cooperation during, during this project. Of course, we recognize the other areas for intervention, the, the, the entrance to Fonse Jean, also very bad condition we hoping to address as soon as this, as this budget is, is, is approved and by this honorable house. We've witnessed the commission in Pit 7 of almost over $2 million water rehabilitation project within Pit 7. Those, some of, many of us here would have had the opportunity to, to be at the commission, commissioning of this project. I spoke about the much awaited Pit 7 playing field, a very ambitious project in terms of location. We spent to date almost $400,000 in the, in the construction of this playing field. And we are within a further injection of maybe $150,000 to take it towards um, playable condition. We're talking about access road, fencing, etc. The housing renovation, we've done quite a bit of work in Pilit Savan, and it will continue, Mr. Speaker. And I'm sure me, like many of the other parliamentary representatives are wrong in this honorable house, eagerly awaiting the approval, parliamentary approval of this, of this um of this budget so we can continue aggressively our housing program. The setting up, excuse me? The, the farmers group, okay? The farmers group in Pitt Seven, okay, set up by yours truly, having received assistance and we continue to receive assistance. Repairs to the health center, renovation at the primary school and we'd like to thank the NBD for partnering with us in the fencing of the primary school. Meanwhile, we will continue discussions with the, with the community center. We know that it is an issue on the table with the Pilitsa Van residents. Um, storm drains in this coming budget, remember on the our DVRP, we have $6 million allocated towards the construction of storm drains. And I know there are a number of issues within the Pilitsa Van community that we will address in this coming year. Street lights are all, all, also other all issues that we will seek to address in this, in this new financial year. And under the ministry, Mr. Speaker, we just received an official communication from, from the Global Environmental Facility of the allocation of $2 million U.S. dollars, $2 million U.S. dollars towards another street lighting, solar lighting facility. Of course, within the coming months, we'll be working in close association with the, with the um, Ministry of Public Works because we know that we have an ongoing street lighting program, Mr. Speaker, with the People's Republic of China to, to, to avoid any duplication, etc., and to ensure that a number of our rural communities okay, will be properly lighted under this project. We continue within the PD7, um, PD7 community. We, we have seen the, the usual, um, usual tapping of government services, uniform assistance, textbook, state college tuition, the National Employment Program, where our university graduates are currently employed, and a number of other young people. Moving on to the Bagatel Fusasia, we've seen the We've seen the construction of the Petrocarib Field Station. I spoke about it earlier on, being managed by the Fossil and Fisheries Cooperative. This is one of the this is a success story, being managed and being managed properly by the Fossil and Fisheries Cooperative. We've seen the commissioning of the Cardboard Water Project, road repairs within the communities. We have seen an improvement in the main road for the Bagatelle community, extensive repairs to the Bagatelle Primary School. Again, housing renovations remain housing needs rather remains a priority and we will continue with this housing program and, and sanitation project. We actually launched a sanitation program in Bagatelle. We've seen the construction of three to four bathroom facilities towards some needy elderly folks. And as I said, I, we, I can hardly wait for the approval of this budget so we can continue with this eradication of the washrooms. As I said, again, a program that the, that the, um, that the opposition has scoffed at repeatedly but we know, we, we know the importance of this project for health and other reasons. 
We've seen the commencement of a new village road within Fort St. Jean, and we hope to continue this and extend it on our community-based project funding. Assistance to fishermen from Fort St. Jean, retrofitting the vessels, ice boxes, equipment, etc. All done, all have been done through, through the efforts of yours truly. Another exciting project which is underway is the upgrade of the playing field and basketball court. We just started thanks to a cash injection of $80,000 on the community-based program. And of course, the young people of the Bagatelle area are very excited. We have seen the leveling and, and subsequent regressing of the, of the playing area, and of course, the fencing, etc. <coughs> on the new monies coming on the community-based program, we are going to upgrade the hard cut into a multi-purpose facility. So this is something I know that the young people of Bagatelle and Footage are also um, excited and looking forward to. On the Rwanda Australian Aid Project, we have been back on the improvement of a storm drain within the Bagatelle community. And we will continue this program under the BNTF 7, um, Minister of Social Services. And of course, our own what we call Disaster Risk Vulnerability Project. We hope that we can continue whatever is left to be done under this um, Australian Aid Project. Like other constituencies, the PD7 constituency has all benefited tremendously under our National Employment Program. We are about to launch a sewing program in the Bagatelle community where we purchase five industrialized, industrialized, industrial rather, sewing machines. And the community center is about to be retrofitted to accommodate these, um, these, these machines. And of course, we've already identified a number of young people who have come forward, young and not so young, to start this um, sewing program. We are going to, um, to, to take on board the services of a well-known seamstress from the PD7 community who have already agreed to come on board to assist us in that program. So the resource centre is also going to be converted into this, and also we hope to setting up an internet cafe, of course, for the Ministry of, um, of Information Technology, a, a computer cafe right there at the Bagatelle, um, at the Bagatelle Resource Centre. The right. area of I'd like to commend the leadership and members of the Dubic Improvement Committee. I um, recently formed Improvement Committee, I'm um, done under my, under my watch, and already they've, they've, they've assisted in the, in the implementation of the housing program in Dubic, and they did so very diligently and accounted for every single, every single cent of the money allocated to them. We heard the Prime Minister and Minister of Finance speak about the, the allocation of lands at 25 cents a square foot, Mr. Speaker. Lands that the people have been occupying for decades, but couldn't call their own. And along came the government, purchased these lands and have allocated to about 20 or so who are well on their way to owning, to owning, owning rather, okay, a piece of, of, of the nature Isle of Dominica. A number of them have already paid for these lands and, and are already be, be beginning the construction. And those of you who haven't visited Dubic in a long time should take a take to Dubic and you would already appreciate the changing landscape of Dubic, a once, a once known as a very, um, well, economically deprived community in Dominica, and you can already start to see the transformation of the village of Dubic. So I urge you to take, a, to take a drive there anytime. Of course, we'll continue our housing program, housing repairs, which remains a, a, like a very acute need in the, in, in the community of Dubic. We've seen um, the recent dredging of the Dubic River, and under, of course, our same DVRP program, we are now, we are hoping in the construction of, the, of, of, of a small river defense wall because we, those of us who've been to the big would know that most of the residents live along the river banks and we're hoping that under the storm drain program we can construct the river wall to offer some sort of protection to to the residents there on the bntf7 which is the the next basic needs short funds project um, minister of social services we have plans for upgrade of the community center into a state-of-the-art social center and 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 other activities. I've also seen the formation of a farmers group, and we're also looking for land available into the setting up of a pigree. A number of young people have expressed their interest in, in coming together to set up a farmers group and requiring assistance to set up a pigree. Of course, with the advent of the abattoir, Mr. 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 Um, Minister of Agriculture, we're hoping that they can also provide um, okay, um, the raw material to this abattoir. Fisheries group, and that's an, again with the approval of this, of this budget, hoping to make a boat and engine available to this very group of young people, those of them who want to go into, the, who want to go into fishing. As I said, the issues of housing, the street lights and employment continue, and yesterday the parish will seek ways and means to, um, to address these issues to the best of my ability. In this two area, I mentioned earlier briefly advanced discussions with the Japanese on a multi-purpose marine facility. 
and I call it a multi-purpose marine facility and not a fisheries complex because the idea that we have is to, is to construct a facility that's not going to encompass the fisheries sector, but also other related marine uses of the marine resource. And we're talking about for recreation. This area, I've been, I've been told, is a, is a very beautiful dive site. In fact, a number of the, the, the clients from the hotels in the south, southeast of the country, Jungle Bay, Rosalie Bay, they come here to do some kayaking and diving, snorkeling, etc. So we hoping that we can change the, 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 the concept and the idea that, 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 that fisheries and other uses of marine, marine resources cannot coexist. Already designs, preliminary designs, or, 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 or visual concept of what we want the area to look like has been submitted to get a concept paper to the Japanese. And I see the permanent secretary here, here with me. He will tell you that for the past two years we've been in, in, in really um, deep discussions with the, with the Japanese government. And we are very confident, we are very optimistic that this project will soon, will soon receive the final nod of approval from the authorities in Tokyo. And as I said, transform not just the physical landscape, but also the economic landscape of that part of the country. Because with the advent of this proposed project, we can envision the creation of many opportunities, job, job opportunities, not just for fishermen, but other users of the facility. Yeah, we could be renting out stalls and stores, rent, renting, diving equipment, etc. Okay, so, so we're hoping, uh, Mr. Speaker, as I said that, and I'm very optimistic and very excited about this project. And I said I'm hoping that, that pretty soon that we can receive the final nod of approval from the Japanese authorities and we can see the actual groundbreaking and subsequent construction of this, of this um, marine facility in this Ubicam store area. I, I dream of it every night, Mr. Speaker, of this project, yes. Um, <laughs> in the, in, in, in Pichlem, Mr. Mr. Speaker, we've seen, um, of course, in the addition of, in, in addition to, to the housing repairs, housing renovation projects, we've seen the construction of a much awaited access route to the health center, community center, Roman Catholic Church basketball court. Um, the Pichler community has been asking for this for decades now, and we've seen, we've seen the construction, the finished project of, in, in this area um, to the tune of almost, I think, over $400,000. And as we speak, funds have also been made available towards the upgrade of the Pichler basketball court. We had the young guys who do very well in, in, in basketball, I want to reach out to them, congratulate them. Funds have already been made available to them towards the upgrade of their court, state of the art material and preparation, rims, etc., and, and lighting of the Pichle, of the Pichle basketball court. And, the, and for this they are very for this they are very happy. Um, Belvi Chopin, we've seen um, Sorry, go back to Pichna. We've seen six slots available in the Marana, Maranatha Square area for the young people. And already in the shelves, we've seen some people already starting to build with these lots allocated to them at the squatter's price of a dollar square foot. And as we speak, the Wasco is currently on, undergoing a $75,000 water project toward providing water, potable water, to the new settlers in that area. Extensive work has that been done to the school, only an effort to ensure that the young folks of the, of, of, of the constituency are educated in a very um, in an optimal in an optimal environment. We've seen also development of the Ostav Ostav Makaton feeder road, a project which I shared with my with my neighbour and good friend um, I'm the member for for Grand Bay. In Bell Bishop, of course, we've seen the allocation of homes to eight families, a three million dollar housing project, and this the sale of three others. We're talking about homes probably value of maybe almost three hundred thousand dollars being allocated to the to the residents residents of the Grenville area which were threatened by landslide some years ago. And of course the government again, because of our humane nature, moved in and committed themselves into providing into reallocating these these um, residents. In addition, fifteen lots at a reduced price given also to, to, to residents of the area. As we speak, we, we've also witnessed the commencement of what they call the Margot to Grenville Link Road by again made um, from funds made available from um, under the community based project. Also we've started work on the Grenville Road, deplorable condition, we just received a cash injection of $80,000 and our contractor has already um, started work, of course it has been in a deplorable condition. So the issues continue, um, the issue of housing, um, the main Margot Road needs need, need, need some attention, street lighting, employment, but yesterday the parapet will continue to push forward and forge ahead in, in seeking to address these issues 
um, in, my, in my next term, Mr. Speaker, and there's no doubt that I, will, that I will have a next term. In addition, under BNTF 7, already had be, um, it been approved, the upgrade of the Bellevue water system. In fact, just this morning, I gave an elderly gentleman a VEP, Madam Spe Mr. Speaker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a VEP, on the way down to Tongue, and he told me, he told me that there's, there's just one thing that he wants, is that part of Bellevue area called Piero, that they, they, they don't receive any water at all. And I assured him that on the BNTF 7, which we hope will kick off very soon, Madam Minister of Social Services, that the Bellevue water system has already, upgrade right of the Bellevue water system has already been approved. And we are hoping that this um, upgrade will extend all the way to the relatively new area along the Bellevue to Pichne bypass. And also hoping that we can extend it down all the way down into this sovereign area of Pichne called Flip, which also have a water problem because of the height from the main Pichner water system. We, we continue, as I said, to enjoy all the all the other major social programs being offered by the government, the Yes We Care, the textbook scheme, transportation for students, uniform assistance, scholarships again. Every time I get an opportunity to speak, I want to thank my, my colleague, the Minister of Education, for his um for his patience with, with me. I think together with myself and together with um, Johnson Drago, we were the most frequent visitors to the Ministry of Education, seeking assistance, both scholarships and otherwise locally, regionally, and internationally for our students. And this is one thing I think that, that, that cannot be questioned, an um, impe impeccable record for pushing for my students in the Pizza and constituency during my short tenure as part of so far. Number of our students right now receiving scholarships and other financial assistance to regional and other international um, um, institutions. And I want to assure the constituents of the Pizza Savan area that I will continue to represent them to the best of my ability, and a number of the, of the allocations under the various ministries, for example, the Ministry of Trade, where we see some money being allocated for the continuation of the apprenticeship program. Already we've had ideas being put forward from residents of the Bellevue, Chopin, Bagatelle area, that this will be put forward, and well, the Minister of Trade is not present, but just rest assured that we'll also receive our fair share of, of, of the money is being made available here. The public support program, I'm pleased to see that a, a million dollars has been made available in the new financial year to continue this program. Mr. Speaker, and, and while, while, while some again scoff at it and ridicule what they call the Red Clinic, as a parliamentary representative, I am extremely happy and grateful that such a facility exists within the government system. That's right. Because, Mr. Speaker, there have been times when, when constituents have approached us, and each, each and every one of us, and we 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 with their back against the wall, and and I don't think that none of us, uh, any of us, rather, Madam Speaker, are immune. Okay, are immune to this. Dear time, Madam Speaker, because of misfortune and hardships, that we will find ourselves with our back against the wall and nowhere else to turn to in cases of emergency, especially medical emergencies. And I'm very happy and grateful that such a facility exists within the Prime Minister's office, where we can get a quick fix, Madam Speaker quick action facility to be able to assist these constituents. Madam Speaker, and as a power rep, no road, no infrastructure. Madam Speaker, sorry. Okay, nothing brings greater joy to, to me. Yes, I, I pass around and, and I see the roads that are built or whatever it is. That, and we, we, still, we feel a certain sense of pride and joy. But Madam Speaker, it, it, it brings greater joy to me when someone returns, Madam Speaker, from overseas and they come back to your office and tell you, Dr. 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 thanks for thanks to you and the Prime Minister. Can I please, can you please take me to the Prime Minister so I can express my thanks to him for in the morning the resources um, to us to be able to allow to our child, our daughter, our father to, to seek medical assistance or otherwise overseas. This is what brings the greatest joy to my heart. Of course, you know, Madam Speaker, uh, medicine is my, is, is my first love, so probably that is why. But it brings greater joy to me than passing around and looking at the roads and the concrete, as the Calisonian said. So I'm very happy that, that, that an allocation is made available there to the public support program. We hope to get a Johnson Drago, of course, frequent visitors, okay, yes, to the PM's office to, to, access, this, to access this program. Under the Ministry of Housing, and the $10 million being made available, and many of us and, and Dominicans would have, would have um, heard the You have four minutes, minutes left, eh? Ten more minutes, ten. Yeah, ten minutes. Madam Speaker, I move that 10 minutes be given to the Minister for the comple completion of his presentation.
second. It has been moved and seconded that the minister be given a further 10 minutes to complete his presentation. Those in favor? Those against? The ayes have it. Please continue. Yeah, thank you, colleagues, and thank you, Madam Speaker. I said we would have remembered at the May 5th rally where the, where the Honorable Prime Minister, sorry, and Minister of Finance made this announcement of aggressive um, program in, in continuing the, the, the housing um, revolution. And I'm pleased to see that an allocation of $10 million has been made available towards that cause. And already after the following the May 5th, um, May 5th, I'm sure many of us, our constituents, would have, would have purchased some, um, you know, Ose Kaila, local fellow, meaning Chancellor Madam Speaker. Okay, we heard the Prime Minister mention housing. Okay, and when are you guys going to start? Because I'm sure all of us here can allude to it that this is probably one of the most sought or one of the most common requests that we, that we get as members of parliament, which is um, for, for housing um, renovation and housing repairs. Also, I'm um, under the Ministry of Public Works. I'm pleased to see that we, we have allocation of $810,000 towards the Pity Servant to Boetica Daily's road rehabilitation, which we hope to continue. Again, as I said, the road had been in a deplorable condition. I've already, I've already received some attention, and we're hoping that this project can continue to bring some sort of alleviation to the road users. I mentioned earlier the solar street lights, I'm Honorable Blackmore, under the People's Republic of China, that we're hoping that with the monies that we're getting from Jeff, which will kick into the new financial year, well, this current financial year, that we can complement this, this, um, this, this, this needed project, and especially the lighting up of, of, of rural areas, after, of course, we take care of the, of the, of the urban areas. So, Madam Speaker, um, as I said, look, looking at the budget and, and the measures um, in the budget, the new capital projects, the new exciting projects um, that this government has lined up for Dominicans. And of course, the, of course the, the measures, I said, that are going to, to alleviate the, the lives and the lives of every day Jew public, the, the, the much laughed of um, um, disposable diapers, Madam Speaker. All of these projects, as I said, have shown that this government as I said, in addition to the infrastructural development that will listen to the cries of the everyday man. And even the, the $200 monthly um, allowance, Madam Speaker, for people over 70 who, who are not currently receiving any form of pension or any form of, of reimbursement, already the following the, the Prime Minister's um, budget address, the Secretary from the Constituent Office um, messaged me telling me that already the office is flooded with people, Madam Speaker coming to register and coming to ask questions about who qualifies or who, okay, whether they qualify or not for this, for this. So, so what I said to many, many of us, Madam Speaker, who earn, a, who earn rather, sorry, a reasonable salary, the $200 would be surprised, Madam Speaker, how this will go a long way into alleviating the plight of, of, of the elderly person who is a woman, maybe that have his $10 light bill to pay, his, 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 his probably LB, LPG bottle, and maybe every three months and to buy, of course, his little groceries for, for, for his consumption. So, Madam Speaker, with all of the measures that I said that, mention, that, that, mention, that, that were mentioned in the, in the Prime Minister's budget address, and with all of these exciting capital projects on the way, um, I, I stand here, as I said, to support this budget and to support it fully and look forward to the Parliament's final approval of this budget so we can begin the implementation of these measures. I thank you very much. Madam Speaker, I rise to make my contribution to the 2014-2015 estimates. Before I start, Madam Speaker, first thank my colleagues and the staff of the Ministry of Lands, Housing, Settlement, and Water Resource Management for the support given to me throughout the past financial year. But most of all, Madam Speaker, I also want to thank my constituents of Mont John, of River Civic, of Grand Fond, Freyal, Rosalie, Newfoundland, and Tefem for their overwhelming support, the patience and tolerance exhibited in order to achieve 
or so many goals in the constituency. And at this time, Madam Speaker, I would also like to extend sympathies to the three families that we lost in the constituency over the last few days. Madam Speaker, as I begin my deliberations on this year's budget, the theme being towards expansion of the economy, I want to say, Madam Speaker, that this budget, taking into consideration the world economic crisis, that this budget is one that is engineered to continue to bring economic stability to Dominica, and at the same time, relieve everyone, such as income owners, business personnel, the physically challenged, the elderly, infants, and the youth. We all, Madam Speaker, can take a brief, a deep breath as a sign of relief. In one way or another, this budget, Madam Speaker, has been crafted by our Prime Minister and his staff of the Ministry of Finance. And also, with the support of our Cabinet, to continue to improve the social and economic burden of everyone. I would therefore like to call on everyone, namely the trade unions, the business entrepreneurs, the tourism sector, the youth and the elderly to provide support to this budget, which aims at making life much better for every one of us. I would just like at this time, Madam Speaker, to just give a few highlights of the budget estimates of 2014-2015. Madam Speaker, the recurrent expenditure for this period is $378.5 million, and the recurrent revenue for that period, $173,848,519, a total of $552.4 million. I want to highlight, Madam Speaker, some key areas considered under the recurrent expenditure. For example, Madam Speaker, personal ambulance, emolulance, sorry. We have wages, salaried allowances, rental of assets, and some key areas under our recurrent revenue to include import duties, custom service charge, income tax to individuals, income tax corporations, VAT, and excess duty on petroleum. I highlighted these areas, Madam Speaker, so that our population, Madam Speaker, will note that, especially in the revenue areas, that no additional taxes has been put on the burdens of these people in this country. I refer, Madam Speaker, to the budget address, particularly the proposals for fiscal measures, and these include the reduction and the removal of VAT, the reduction and the removal of income taxes, the reduction and removal of import duties on certain products, especially baby wipes, <coughs> adult diapers, computers, We have also, Madam Speaker, the reduction and removal of excise taxes, increase in salaries of public officers, a relief to pensioners and the people of pensionable age who do not have a pension, and much has been said, Madam Speaker, with respect to the elderly and persons that just above 70 years who will be getting this special allowance of $200. The provision for health financing Madam Speaker, these are some of the key fiscal measures that have been highlighted in the Prime Minister's budget. Madam Speaker, the Economic and Social Review for the fiscal year 2013-2014 recognizes clearly that economic growth, employment creation, and poverty reduction are the central pillars of growth and social protection strategy. Therefore, Madam Speaker, the fiscal measures outlined in the budget address will definitely address these issues. 
the ministry of which I serve as parliamentary secretary for lands, housing settlements, and water resource management, you will admit, Madam Speaker, addresses many of the social programs which have been successfully accomplished during the past fiscal years and the budgeted fiscal year for 2014-2015. I refer, Madam Speaker, now to the Economic and Social Review of 2015 and 2014, page 30, where, Madam Speaker, we see outlined here a number of achievements, especially within that ministry. Over the years, Madam Speaker, we saw, Madam Speaker, in terms of ownership of housing lots in Jimit, in Canfield East, Bellevue Chopin, Union S, Emsol, Lily Valley, Hillsborough Gardens, a total of 20 lots, Madam Speaker, made available to the residents in these areas. 20. Also, Madam Speaker, as highlighted in this, in this review, the houses distributed in the Carib Territory, Hillsborough Gardens, Geneva, Lily Valley, Chance, Stock Farm, and Bellevue Roll, a total of six. Regularization of squatters, Madam Speaker, again, in Geneva, Casbrus, Chance, Stock Farm, and Focoli, seven. And Madam Speaker, a number of persons have benefited in the Housing and Sanitation Review Program. Also, Madam Speaker, within that ministry, a total of 138 valuations were done. Other infrastructural works were done in Hillsborough Gardens, in Union Estates, and in Lily Valley, and a total of 100 families were targeted. In the area of water supply, Madam Speaker, currently, Madam Speaker, we are well over 95% of houses with access to potable water. And that means, Madam Speaker, we are getting closer to our Millennium Development Goals, which is to be achieved by 2015. And within that ministry, Madam Speaker, I can mention some of the major capital works that have been undertaken in this ministry. I make mention, Madam Speaker, first of all, to the upgrade of Water Area 1. Madam Speaker, we saw the construction of a 250,000 gallon tank at Antrim. And for those of us who drive past in this area, you will see this tall structure, not in concrete, but glass fused. And this Structure, this additional storage tank, Madam Speaker, is meant to provide a more secure water supply for the residents in the W Area 1. Talking about, Madam Speaker, people in the Rosso, in Goodwill, in Mount Bruce, in Kings Hill. We're talking about areas such as Massac, Mahu, Warner, stretching down to Lubia. And a number of areas, Madam Speaker, in this, in this, a number of people in this area, Madam Speaker, are the ones who are going to be benefiting from this additional storage tank. Also, Madam Speaker, we saw the construction of a 100,000 gallon storage tank at Massac. And a total of $20 million has been spent on this section of water area one. Madam Speaker, I also make reference to the Benz water supply. Much has been said about the Benz water supply for the parliamentary representative for that, for that area. And we are seeing the soon to be completed a water system for the residents of Benz. A total of $4.2 million, Madam Speaker, spent on this water system. We have again, Madam Speaker, the shortfall water supply, we have a total of $1.2 million spent. 
And also, Madam Speaker, the Grand Fund Water Supply, one that I have been talking about for the past months. But let me admit, Madam Speaker, that the Shawford and Grand Fund Water Supplies have been funded by the Basic Needs Trust Fund. And I can tell you, Madam Speaker, that these water supplies are systems that were in dire need to the people of these communities. In Grand Fund, Madam Speaker, we saw the construction of an intake, the construction of a 60,000 gallon tank, and for the past months, we saw the complete re replacement of the distribution lines. What we have seen in Grand Fund, Madam Speaker, especially is the fact that before this new system, we had a system whereby the water was piped through an intake in the river and straight into the dwelling homes of individuals. But today we see a much improved system where we have a much improved intake. We have also, Madam Speaker, the construction for the first time, a storage tank with capacities to serve the villages of Grand Four, River Street and Mount John. And we now have the pipe replacement whereby before we had two inch pipes which supplied that village. But today we have four inch pipes, Madam Speaker. And this I know for sure will soak this community for a very, very long time. There was also, Madam Speaker, works in the Grand Bay area, especially the replacement of pipes in the Lally area in Grand Bay. And much has been done also to along the West Coast under the 10th EU Development, and F Development Fund. In this area, Madam Speaker, along the West Coast, we have seen the development of several, several, uh, I must say, not systems, but um, water intakes. We have water intakes in Kulibistri and Picard. We have also water storage tanks in these areas that have been built under these funds. We also have, Mr. Madam Speaker, the installation of filtration tanks. And these are meant to improve the quality of the water. So, Madam Speaker, what has been happening within, within this ministry? And I can tell you that Dawasco, Madam Speaker, has been making much effort to ensure that we achieve that goal of ensuring that we get closer to the goal of our Millennium Development. Also, to Madam Speaker, in Vekas, we see continued works in Vekas, especially the construction of storage tanks, so as to improve the quality of water in, in this community. I know our Prime Minister is very happy because it's a water system that has been much talked about. And you can recall, Madam Speaker, in previous budget statements, we saw the improvement of our water systems. We had the six, six uh, major water supply systems. And um, Vekas was one of those which was to have been constructed. But the Prime Minister had delayed this, the Vekas project just to allow other, other constituencies to get the opportunities. And today I know that the residents of Vekas are very happy that they now have improvements to their water systems. Madam Speaker, I will now move to an aspect of my contribution to this budget that relates to my constituency. In just four and a half years, Madam Speaker, much has been achieved in the Monjo University constituency. And as has been said by my other colleagues here, Madam Speaker, with respect to the negative responses of the opposition, there is that feel, there is that fear, that division that they continue to create with respect to what we do. Everyone, Madam Speaker, within our constituencies know that much work is being done in the various constituencies. And I'm proud, Madam Speaker, to report that much has been done in the Monjo University constituency over the last years. We're talking about just four years and six, seven months. In Monjo, for example, Madam Speaker, we saw the rehabilitation of the Monjo Primary School. Presently ongoing, Madam Speaker, in Monjo, we have again the rehabilitation of a section of the Monjon Main Road that takes us from the Four Corners to the playing field. An amount of $100,000 is now being spent to rehab this, this road project. Very recently in Monjon, Madam Speaker again, 
we saw that upgrade of the playing field where we spent some $25,000. And a number of our persons, residents in Monjon, continue, Madam Speaker, to benefit from a housing program. I can say recently that a new building was built to one of our residents, a resident who was in dear need of, of housing assistance. But what is significant about this, Madam Speaker, is that this program was, or this individual, he got the assistance with the support of other government ministries. We had involvement of other government ministries, such as the Ministry of Youth, where we engage young persons in a program of skills training. And while they were learning the job, they were also being paid for, for doing the job. We also engaged the Ministry of Trade through the National Employment Program, where they paid the salaries for the young persons, and the Ministry of Housing provided the materials. So we see, Madam Speaker, this kind of assistance being given to individuals. And in that particular, particular case, Madam Speaker, I make mention to the fact that sometimes our beneficiaries have difficulties in the construction of their houses. And I'm looking forward towards further collaboration of the various ministries in ensuring that individuals who receive housing assistance can get that type of support in the construction of their homes or repairs to the homes. In reverse street, Madam Speaker, we saw in the Tsayam area road rehabilitation. A section of the road from the Tooth area to the center was rehabilitated at a cost of $78,000. And BNTF funds were made available to the tune of $132,000, $132,247 for the continued rehabilitation of that section of road, taking us to the playing field. In Montfregard, in the Dam Road area, Madam Speaker, presently $41,000. $345 is now being spent for improving the access into that section of the, of the village. What we see happening, Madam Speaker, in that area is the construction of footpaths, steps, to make it much easier for the persons who travel to that area. Again, in sections of the Montfrey and Main Road, we saw areas that were rehabilitated to the tune of $34,000. And in the Mushapir area, we're talking about farm access improvements, $200,000 spent over the last financial year. In the River Civic area, we saw again the improvement of water, especially by ensuring that we did the necessary extension to the various communities. So in the River Street Fuel area, we extended the water system from the Ibex area into Platt and into Fuel. And I'm happy that, Madam Speaker, today, the residents of these areas can open the taps, be very contented with the quality of water that they're getting from the taps. Also, Madam Speaker, we did the replacement of pipes from the Tooth area into River Maho, taking us down into the playing field. The pipes were replaced in this area, so residents now have more comfort in ensuring that they have water at all times. Both pipes, no damaged pipes, as has been the case, especially when you have some that are old. So we have seen the replacement of pipes in these areas, Madam Speaker. Street lights, again, we had 35 street lights installed in the River Civic area. And for people who move to River Civic, especially at night, you will see the difference, Madam Speaker, because people can move comfortable from one area, one section of the village to another, because the area is lighted, and that in itself ensures the safety of the, of the residents. I must report to Madam Speaker, and something that I must take, to, take note of, in the frail area, we have our school children that are now being transported to the Monjon Primary School by bus. Never, Madam Speaker, has this thing ever happened in the history of this constituency. For the first time ever, residents from Frail are benefiting by ensuring that their children can now rely on bus services to the Monjon Primary School. For those of us, Madam Speaker, who do not know Frail, Frail is about a mile and a half from the Monjon Primary School. 
And I can tell you sometimes it can be a task to be walking the roads, walking to school in the morning. You, you know the school hours at the, prim at the primary. You, you get there at, for 9 o'clock. You break at lunch. You go home. You walk these roads. You get back again for 1.15. 1 1 and you get back down again. So that can be very, very taxing for, for children, Madam Speaker. So we have seen the improvement of, both, of, of, of bus, bus services sorry, for our children at the primary schools. Another area that needs to be mentioned of, Madam Speaker, is the upgrade of the River Street Community Hall as a disaster shelter. Um, that money was made available again on the funds provided by the Basic Needs Trust Fund to the tune of $52,607. A number of young persons again in this community benefited from a capacity building program. Persons were trained in, in plumbing, in electricity, in pastries, and a number of other areas. In Grand Four, again, Madam Speaker, we saw the rehabilitation of road from Rosalie into Grand Four. The Grand Four water supply, again, I've been mentioned of, of it, which has been funded by the Basic Needs Trust Fund. The completion of the Grand Four playing field at a cost of $0.6 million. The lighting of the Grand Four basketball court, $15,000 and over 70 persons have benefited under the housing and repair programs, Madam Speaker. I, I must endorse this program, Madam Speaker, because for those of us who visit homes, what we realize, Madam Speaker, is that there are a number of people who are in their need of assistance. When you have persons whose buildings are deteriorating in a state of disrepair, Somebody Madam Speaker. Somebody has a, ma a, a, a cell phone near to your open mic. Can you just remove it from the area, please? Yes. If I'm to continue, Madam Speaker, um, I was saying that a number of persons have been benefiting under the housing program. And uh, persons have their various challenges, especially the, the elderly. These are persons who have contributed to the development of, of the communities. And when they are at that age, Madam Speaker, it is not difficult for them to access institutions like the credit unions and the banks to get the small loans that is necessary. As a matter of fact, most of them are refused because of their age, because they have no, no income. So when we have programs like this, Madam Speaker, for helping persons to repair homes, I can tell you, Madam Speaker, it is something that is going on well in the various communities, and a number of persons have benefited under the program in the constituency. We see, Madam Speaker, the continued support in education to our persons who are going to prim primary schools or persons who are going to secondary schools and college. We, our number of residents have continued to receive uniform and book assistance. And also, Madam Speaker, um, the $500 grant, which is being made available to our children who are moving into, into um, secondary school. Presently, we have three persons in China undertaking tertiary education, one in Venezuela, one Cuba, one Morocco, Grambling two, MSU one, and quite a number of our residents, Madam Speaker, considering, sorry, are receiving assistance um, to undertake programs at the University of the West Indies. Madam Speaker, in this constituency, I need to say that during this financial year, we will see continued road improvements in Mont John. Continued road improvement in, in River Zurich, especially the various village roads. We will see, Madam Speaker, continued housing assistance for our residents. The construction of written walls in sections of the village where there was damage as a result of heavy rains in 2011, and some of the homes are at risk. So we have to ensure that we provide the necessary written walls for those persons to ensure safety of their homes. There will be continued installation of streetlights, Madam, Madam Speaker, 
in areas that have been identified. In Grand Four, we will continue to do the necessary works on the Grand Four main road, especially in the Vava to Carpet area, where these sections of road are in a serious state of disrepair. As a matter of fact, Madam Speaker, sometime next week, work will begin on this area where we will see the construction of a retaining wall, and this will be followed with improved drainage and surfacing of the road so as to relieve the people of Grand Four and other road users of the conditions that, that now exist. There will also be, Madam Speaker, the continued improvement of the Grand Four playing field. And presently, we have a team of persons on the playing field that are doing maintenance work. And this work entails basically the uprooting of the old weeds on the playing field and ensuring that the grass that is being grown on the playing field is within standards that will be acceptable when the field is completed. Also, Madam Speaker, we expect a number of persons from the Grand Four area to benefit in housing assistance. I want to make mention, Madam Speaker, of the NEP program, where presently 25 persons have been employed. We have presently seven persons who are employed under the NEP program, where they are undertaking sanitation and beautification programs. What they are doing, basically, Madam Speaker, is the cleaning of the villages. They are cutting all the various hedges and ensuring that the villages of Monjon, River Street, and Grand Four remain clean. And I'm aware that, Madam Speaker, that this program is one that's going to go well for the village councils because we are aware that during the month of, of November that there is the judging of villages to ensure that these houses and, and areas, the streets and everything, are being judged for, for cleaning and beautification. So I know that with the provision of those persons who are undertaking the the, the cleaning and maintenance of these communities that is going to boost the communities and ensure that they have cleaner communities. Also, that under that NEP program, Madam Speaker, I, I must mention to the employment of 10 farmers who are presently employed and they've been paid a salary at the end of the month. And all this, Madam Speaker, is in an effort to improve on our employment situation in this constituency. Madam Speaker, I want to end by thanking our constituents, thanking the various persons who have helped in ensuring that this constituency continues to remain on the, on the labor. I want to say, Madam Speaker, that in this constituency, residents of Mount John, of River Street and Grand Four, they are satisfied with the works that have been undertaken in this constituency. I want to say that they are aware that putting the hands of the opposition is putting them many, many years back, backward. Madam Speaker, I want to urge the residents to continue to support the, the government, continue to support myself as parliamentary representative, and I can assure them the continued representation that will continue to make lives much more comfortable for everyone. Once again, Madam Speaker, let me say that I support the budget fully and I know that it will bring much relief to the constituents of Mount John River District and furthermore, the people of Dominica. Thank you so much. Uh, speaker, I move that the House be adjourned until Tuesday, the 29th of July at 10 a.m. Seconded, Madam Speaker. It has been moved and seconded that this Honorable House be adjourned until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Those in favor? Aye. Those against? The eyes have it. This honorable house stands adjourned until tomorrow, 
Tuesday the 29th of July at 10 a.m. your social security or your driver's license. Married women are advised also to bring their marriage certificate. Um, students, that is um, non-nationals, would require to bring in their from a uh, document from the immigration departments giving the status in Dominica, whether it is um, a student on student permit, work permit, or, or temporary residence. These are the documents that we require to bring in as long as your as well as your passport, which indicate that your length of stay in Dominica. The multi-purpose identification card will be beneficial to both the citizens and the government. The benefits um, to the citizens, primary, first of all, would be one, they have an, a, a card or a, that can identify them to any institution, because we are in, in, in discussions with the private sector more specifically financial institutions who require more than one form of ID when you're doing any transaction with them. Um, additionally, Social Security will um, has indicated an interest in coming on board so that your, num your Social Security number will be inserted on that card. And the existing card that, that we now use will eventually phase out. 
government now will be able to have a, a number, because the system will generate a number that is unique to every individual. So the government will be able to identify each individual um, to determine that the, whoever they claim to be can be authenticated. And they can now have um, access to the services that the government provided and who know who will be entitled to what um, sort of benefits that, that the government is providing. Okay, after, after enrollment, the, there's a procedure to be followed where um, the information that is provided at enrollment will be um, vetted. The vetting includes the verification of the source documents that are brought in to determine whether they are in fact the, that of the person who brought it in. When this has been completed, the Electoral Commission um, will now have the, the, the final vetting of and determine that the individual who has enrolled is in fact an a registered elector. Once that person is a registered elector, the electoral number will be inserted on the card and the card will be issued. Normally, the process for between enrollment and delivery of the card should be a, a two-week period unless there is a, a problem where the individual will be alerted and they come in to rectify that um, problem. Multi-purpose identification, MPID, identification for the nation, MPID, multi-purpose identification, MPID, an ID for everybody, MPID, the new form of national identification that will be used regionally for multiple purposes, an ID for everybody. Today's Dominican economy, having been made safe by this government, has boosted the confidence of the local private sector. This is evidence of this government's concern for the private sector and local economy. In Rosoan environment, the emergence of major private sector-owned business enterprises is a clear sign of faith in the government's ability to create the type of economic environment conducive to such investments. Evidence of this government's concern for the private sector and local investment. In other parts of Dominica, the increase in new hotel plants and other areas of investment is testimony to the government making financing and concessions affordable and available thus boosting investor confidence. Once again, this is evidence of the government's concern for the private sector and local investment. These investments have created employment through manual labor, procurement of material and use of heavy equipment. And how could we forget the employment through provision of services? Once again, this is further evidence of the government's concern for the private sector and for local investment. Now take a look. These are all locally owned and that's what this government has done to improve and increase confidence in the private sector and boost economic growth. This, this is further evidence of this government's concern for the private sector and for local investors and local investment. Henceforth, my government will pursue policies to create symmetry between our domestic and foreign policies. Today, we have made the